Okay. Whoop. Let me know how the sound is. Haley says I saw a clip of Sneeko pretending to rape pretending to rape a feminist and I just made me walk away. Sneeko's using his beautiful mind for the dark arts. That's interesting. It's a weird way to express your feelings, Sneeko, but not completely out of character, I suppose. He's definitely going for shock factor. Actually, I wonder what's gonna happen to Sneeko. I'm seriously like I don't know. I'm gonna flagrant and today. We are joined by the brilliant, the glamorous, hmm. the flagrant one himself. We have Russell Brand in the motherfucking hey. building. Thank you. Thank you. Can you guys hear I this? It's probably, know. wait, it's probably really low. Let me turn it up here. Brought me here to fuck me up and annihilate me. That's why I came in camouflage. All reality is held within your consciousness. There is nothing that you are aware of that you do not know about. Whether it's the Big Bang or the dinosaurs or political assassinations or quantum physics, all of that exists within your individual awareness. That is anticipated in all of the great ideologies. In Islam, in Christianity, in Buddhism, they tell you this. It's an illusion, but you have to participate as if it is real. You have to find the beauty in it. You are creating reality while you are living it. You are God. Thank you. Can I say okay. something to you real quick up yeah, front? Yeah, go on. Hi, this is also Bear. Lay we down. have Bear here. Hi, Bear. Hey, buddy. Good boy. <laughs> is it still low as fuck, or I can't? Because you guys are a few seconds away from me. Hold on. All reality is held within your consciousness. Okay. <laughs> I think it's good now. Maybe a little too loud. Don't you cooperate? <laughs> it's meant to be an emotional support animal, you know um, what it is. Yeah. I got like I went to the doctors and got an emotional support animal yeah. card. And you have to support him every day. That's it, how it's it unrelenting support that you require. <laughs> I double bluffed myself though because like, I went to get the dog so that I could take him places, yeah. but then I realised when I can't take him places, I'm antagonised by it and like it freaks me out. So I've actually do require an emotional support. That's how emotional I found support. out. You need another dog. Yeah. You can't. Take now I need two dogs. Yeah. Minimum. <laughs> so big to take anywhere. Like you can't fly with this guy. It makes you nervous. Yeah, you gotta <laughs> run a private jet. He's just sliding around. It's gonna be a whole thing. He's scampering about the place. <laughs> You'd be better off with a terrorist. <laughs> <laughs> At least there's a chance. Because they say you can't negotiate with terrorists, but you actually can. Yeah, just give him a treat. That's what you have to do. Yeah. Yeah. What are your needs? <laughs> what is the historic problem that you're trying to address? <laughs> Otherwise, what's gonna happen? Cycle of violence. <laughs> Perpetuating a cycle of violence. <laughs> right. So I might get an emotional support terrorist. I don't know. As long as, <laughs> but like, what if he don't cooperate? <laughs> Listen, I've got doubts about the outfit. I'll tell you now. It's one of those yeah. things I put it on and I felt confidence. Then I see myself in the wing mirror in my car and I thought, you look like uh, Randy Savage. You know, the yeah. wrestler. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. No, we know. I keep doing that. I keep dressing, thinking I'm looking cool, but and he's always a wrestler. And you just snap into a Slim Jim. No, yeah. this yeah. fit is fire. Yeah, I yeah. like the I fit. I love it. Love he's it. wearing like a cheetah robe dress. I, I see. Yeah. It's close. Yeah, you got black American approval right now. Yeah. Yeah. You're black yeah. American. Yeah. <laughs> so sorry for the colonial history. I apologize. I'm going to look at the floor until you say it's okay for me to look up. You're good. We've got to have another conversation. <laughs> continent. <laughs> Schultz, Dutch, Talk fine. To me. European. I think, uh, yeah, it's like probably German. Yeah, Prussian, actually. Well, he's actually Scottish. you should apologize to me. To whom? <laughs> Everybody, Germany. They yeah. made it, well, they have didn't you, start it, they exacerbated it. Have you it. seen that Doug Stanhope joke? Go on. No, he yeah, goes, yeah. Uh, he goes, you know what, Germany did London a favor by blowing it up, and they rebuilt it the same way. <laughs> <laughs> That's what oh, I'm Man, that brilliant man. Uh, you were my first YouTube wormhole. Oh, nice one. Thank you very much, I think. Like, that's a compliment. That is a compliment. <laughs> yeah. I, I forget which special you were touring in the States, but you came and you did all these, like, interviews on, like, morning shows, daytime talk shows. I think it was Messiah Complex. Was yeah. it Messiah? Okay, it was Messiah. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, yeah. it was so interesting because, like, you were known enough where you were touring, but some of these people that did, like, daytime TV and shit, they don't know who you are, right? Yeah, I remember that. And it's weird, though, because Russell Brand is, like, a movie star, isn't he? Like, when, what was your guys' first introduction to Russell? If you guys don't know, like... For me, it was like that drug rock star actor and everything that I knew him from. But that maybe was my generation. Um, I don't know if people know him for different things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It felt like... They were rude. But like this, is, this is what was beautiful about it. You would come in, <sighs> and they were kind of like... They didn't really take you seriously that much. And then you would fucking steamroll these people. Oh, you're very it good at that. Was, it was gotcha. so fucking satisfying to watch. They would go, they'd judge you by the shit that you wore, and you did lean into it. You wore some wild shit. And they thought you were like this rock star dude, whatever, they didn't take anything seriously. And then you would fucking pommel these people, charm the chicks, you're flirting with the guy even, and the guy's like, what's going on? Is he gay? Is he straight? And then you're flirting with the girl. And like, everybody's just caught in this fucking whirlwind, and then you're out. 
And I went on this and it was just like one video after another and after another. And I remember going, it was the first time that I saw somebody propel themselves to superstardom without a media complex, even though you were within industry. I mm, interesting, interesting, interesting already. Uh, Charles says, am I the only one that feels like there's something slightly off about Andrew Schultz? Can't put my finger on it. It might be that he's actually really smart, but he plays the dem guy. Relatable. But, like, he does that. That's, like, his shtick. And some people don't like it, but I think it's funny. I didn't, you didn't become famous to me from industry. That's cool. YouTube <laughs> popped, and then I was like, this guy's an FX show? This guy's a stand-up thing? Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? And now, that's how people become successful. That's brilliant. That's good, because that means, I think in an indirect way, very indirect, because it doesn't seem you're explicitly saying it at all, you're giving me some, if not all, of the credit for your rise. <laughs> <laughs> well done. Well done, my mighty prodigy. I thought he was going to say, for, for your own rise. And I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you took it away. Completely. <laughs> I don't want to take credit yeah. for stuff that I'm not connected to at all. That's smart. Now, Although if you think of the British Empire, though, that's sort of what we do. Yeah, it's on yes. brand. Yeah. Yes. Some brand for the whole empire. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Nice. On brand. Yeah. 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 Now, did you go to America going, I'm going to do this, this is easy? No. As a matter of Look, when I first came famous, I was, it was, I was doing movies and all that kind of thing in yep. your country. And like, I was really excited about it. I've been famous in this country where we are now, England, ah, oh, your majesty. Like I've been famous here a couple of years. When I went out there, I weren't sure what to expect, but it's the sort of, it's the heart of our culture. So I wanted to sort of succeed there. This is the moment I remember most. They got me that gig hosting the MTV VMA Awards. And like yep. at that time in your country, George Bush was president. Mm -hmm. I goes, oh, you know, I, goes, I said, oh, you've got that uh, cowboy fella in charge of your country. That's very good to like, you know, give back to the mentally ill. Cause in our country, you wouldn't be trusted with a pair of scissors, right? <laughs> And I was very pleased with myself. And I made some jokes about the Jonas Brothers and all of that. Oh, they wear those virginity rings. I didn't know they wore them on their cocks. Yeah, and all this yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? The next day, the death threats was flooding in. Death threats, proper death threats. And like, it was weird because we'd had this party to celebrate that I was doing these VMAs and the, the, uh, the room was filled with helium balloons. And by the Japanese businessman, hello, how are you? Says, you have to be really smart to play dumb in an endearing way. And I think that's really interesting. By the time I got home, they were, you know when a balloon is hanging at half height, you know, like just hovering. I am watching this video on 1.5 speed. I see Discord discussing it. Um, just FYI, I do have it playing on 1.5 speed. And like, the party's over, baby. Yeah, and yeah. I was just like looking at, I was Googling my own name there, and that's why I infatuated by phone. And like, it was like, I'd become like one of the most Googled things in the world, you know, when that sort of thing happens? No. But it was not good news. <laughs> <laughs> it happened. You keep up with that terrorist shit. It's coming. <laughs> like, and like, um, and, but it was not good news. And my agent, uh, the, I was with WME, like, he goes, well, Ross, you wanted everybody in America to know who you are, and now they do, and they don't like you. <laughs> so it was a pretty heavy this, and that was the guy who was on 15% of that shit. So, but yeah, that's how, and so I came, I Thing, I didn't like I came adoring American culture as much as you know we're all aware of what the sort of corporate and financial aspects of American culture. This is a uh, Japanese businessman says has Russell Brand always been pretty woo woo like this? I've never followed him as a person, but his recent stuff feels like a departure from what I've heard first heard. Yeah, he's he's super woo woo. That's why I'm excited to get into this like video and not pause it too much. But he I can I count him as a very like conspiracy woo woo person, um, much more than me because I don't think there's a conspiracy. I think the like, humans are just human, but I think he thinks there's like conspiracies based off of his videos culture and how that sort of contributes to the <clears throat> problems that all of us are experiencing at the moment but still the front yeah. of house shit is amazing and we all want a little bit of what a do you adore about it I think like, some of the greatest geniuses of contemporary art of like a, a move emerged out of America, <laughs> the thing that you and I do, the, fo like, or, you know, the, the fo folk artists, like stand up comedy, the best practitioners of it, with a, a few notable ex exceptions, come out of the United States. The musical legacy, what's emerged from that culture, like, it's created things that are, before it, there's this sort of like aristocratic, jaded cultures. Before, this is like the sort of birth of a different type of hustler intensity, true melting point, a true global society. I mean, the tragedy is, it seems to me, that it has become corporatized like no culture ever before that everything whether you look at sport or music or comedy everything is commodity and I think like the area that like you know we if I may say are working in now is an attempt at least to have a new frontierism a new pioneering spirit to, to operate in a place that ain't been yeah. fully yeah to check it yeah so yeah it yeah <laughs> <laughs> now Russell sees himself as like a spiritual leader right and for the record I don't so like I just want to like okay but like Russell Brand is a mainstream comedian actor who has gone more independent and his videos are kind of very controversial on YouTube. They're considered like pretty, like I said, woo woo conspiracy theory and slash like truth, like truth bringer is Russell Brand. And like destiny, I'm very cynical when people are like, I have the truth, even me. Like I don't, I'm not making a claim to have the truth, but I am making a claim to, I think be more willing to admit that I don't know. And I think that feels like truth telling to people. Versus Russell, I think, actually does believe he, like, knows the truth, which is interesting. Oh, you took the wind out of his sails, dog. He was going. And then he was like, oh, you just said that shit. Fuck you. 
Yayo wants to know if I'm eating watermelon. Yes, I am. I'm eating definitely healthy ass watermelon. Yep, that's definitely what I'm eating. But you know, you've got to have different meters, ain't you? Got to have a rhythm section. Yeah. Can't all be guitar solos. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> he hit you with a ba dum bum. No, but you're right, man. It is, a, it is a cool way to. Yeah, I wonder if, hmm. if, if the goal is to say the exact thing that you want to say and how you want to say it. Yeah. You can't do it within a corporate system because they have to answer to too many people, probably. Yeah. Right. And if the exact thing that you want to say isn't going to be acceptable to the masses that are consuming that corporation's content then you only have one other option, right? I think you're operating at a really interesting place with what you did with your special and all that. And I see when Louis came on and like you sort of talked about, like I was aware that he was doing stuff like that a little while ago. And like, I've, I think this is how we're going to operate now. Yeah. Like they call it, don't they? I guess you lot are all of every members of your team that are across it. I'm trying to scan who they will be because they all look, is it you, mate? Like things like internet free and that. Like it's like <laughs> now we will deal directly with our Oh, web three, yeah, 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 yeah. Because like for me, like one, it's amazing to go through something like that, a studio system movie, to do a movie that's yeah. been made by a big studio. Like they take you in a room and like there's all posters of your face. Which yeah. poster do you think of your face is the best one? Yeah. I do know I like them all. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. All these yeah, yeah, yeah. posters of my face. It's so, it makes you kind of delirious and yeah. mental. But as a friend of mine who's like a film star, he said he goes you realize in the end yeah. that all of that stuff the billboards on sunset yeah. that's just an inadvertent symptom of someone else making money off you yeah. that's all that is but like sweet little narcissists that we are we think i'm important <laughs> i'll show them i'm not a tubby little boy anymore <laughs> <laughs> but you is are. That what you're trying to get over the childhood obesity <laughs> who would come to a fucking interview in this dressing gown <laughs> unless they were a fat child no one <laughs> You wouldn't, you wouldn't come in an house coat <laughs> in a sex worker's lingerie. <laughs> um, yeah, I didn't know about men having eating disorders until you. Another area where I was at the forefront. Also pioneered, yeah. Pioneered. Oh, I didn't know that. Russell had an eating disorder? In those men's eating hold disorders. On, hold on, hold on, hold on. This is, I think, you taking Indian culture again. <laughs> no, no, I was believing you, not anorexia. It, yeah, but still, your eating disorder. That's not what food we paid for. Are you crazy? <laughs> fair, fair enough. You just said eating disorder, the umbrella. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't no, think believe you. me specifically, though. Got you. I got yeah. Yeah. the umbrella. Well, yeah, I understand more than anorexia because at least you get to taste it. Yeah, but you got to vomit. That's a whole. I mean, you can speak to it better than we can, but that seems awful. If you've brought me in here as a vomiting consultant. <laughs> Ooh, Japanese businessman says to me, people like Russell Brent always feel like they have to consistently be in flux in order to maintain their persona. You can only summon this level of passion when your ideology is new to you. Interesting. 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 Hmm. Hmm. I'm gonna think on that, but that's good. <laughs> you guys have any thoughts on that? It's flattery. <laughs> no, like, yeah, I did, like, with that addiction modality. <laughs> we, we gotta butter you up a little. Say some yeah. nice stuff. Oh, he's brilliant. I watched all your interviews. You are brilliant. Yeah. <laughs> okay. For the record, Betty, uh, Batty Ghoul, I see you. You said Russell was addicted to Katy Perry. I mean, you know what's crazy is like Russell Brand had to go through a transformation, right? He's sober now. He's married again. He has a different family. Um, Katy Perry, when he was married to her, she went off and married Orlando Bloom, which is like the craziest crossover ever. Talk about fucking bubble hopping. Guys, I'm telling you, the dating pool when you're famous sucks. It's just other famous people. Gross. Right? Like total lame. Like 8 billion people on the planet and like you're too paranoid to ever date a normal person sucks. But Russell did turn his life around. That's why I like Russell. And at the same time, I think it's I, oh, I think it's funny that, oh, I don't know. We have to finish the interview to know. And I have all his books. I'm going to read all those too. Anyways, let's, let's keep going. Well, this really, doesn't take. Not too much butter. You also can speak about vomiting in a way that I can. Let's get into it. <laughs> now, like I reckon, the sort of I, that, that model of addiction is a very useful model. I okay. feel like, the, see, I'm a 12-step person. That's like how I stay clean from the old drinking drugs. Now, and once you look at how your addiction issues began, there's a sort of a biographical component where you go through your past. You look at how you was as a kid. So retrospectively, I can recognise that the way I was eating chocolate when I was a little kid, the way I was watching TV when I was a little kid. All them things are the tendencies of addiction. And as soon as you find the appropriate object or a, an effective object, like uh, smack, like in, uh, heroin yep. in your country, like, uh, and crack, I think that's a ubiquitous term. Cracks have been globally branded. Yeah, we've accepted yeah, yeah. that. Absolutely. Their agent's amazing. Yeah, yeah, they, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah we all accept it fully. Um, like those things, they are a shortcut, the shortest gap between two dots. But yep. like their behavior and the tendency is already latent and present. You can sort of see it in all sorts of things. So I reckon that eating disorders, even though they're more complex mm -hmm. in some ways, because food is life-giving right. and anorexia seems 
seems like a bizarre and awful reversal of the process of <clears throat> nurture. I heard an anorexic person's parents say that once. It's as if they're undoing and reversing all of the things that we gave them, all of the food and mm -hmm. the care and the love mm -hmm. is being undone. Yeah, 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 it's yeah, fucked yeah. up as a novel. Um, like, uh, uh, but the, yeah, the bulimia thing, I reckon I, when I was in treatment, in the first couple of days I was in treatment, I was like on a drug called... Dirty Scumbag says Russell Brand has been preaching the same thing for 15 years. 15 years now, where's the flux? I feel like the way he titles his videos, though, and the way he, like, everything is, like, a matter of, like, urgency. Everything is, like, the end of the world today. All of Russell's new content is, like, it's the end of the world! Listen, it's the end of the world! He's, like, the guy at the corner with the sign. So I think that's a little bit of his problem, for me at least, is that when I watch his content, it just feels very paranoid and, like, different than, like, the content he was making a few years ago, which was all about introspection but was more like calm and level-headed. I feel like he's gone much more down the conspiracy route personally, but that could just be me. Or maybe he has the same conspiracy energy that Sneeko does. It's them, it's them, it's the top, it's the top. There is no top. There's only us, people. There's just people in my belief. In my belief. Um, yeah. Subutex, the sublingual uh, opiate blocker that helps you come off of heroin. And on the first night there, I like uh, there was like a pack of biscuits in my room and I ate all them biscuits and puked them up. And I thought, fucking, that's really weird that I've done that. And I remember that I'd not done it since I was about 14, 15, which was when I started to use drugs addictively. So that, in a sense, we're all looking for an expression of something, which is why another like little note within the rubric of addiction philosophy is that, that the genesis of addiction, longing, craving, yearning, is a very powerful force and can be directed to something. You guys are saying, is this not just branding? We'll see. Because allegedly in this podcast, he actually says... That is more than just branding. So that's, that's why I want to get to the What is drive? What is yearning? What is longing? Can be, if you live in a culture that will direct it, it's very, very powerful force. Very, very powerful source. Go on, undercut it. Undercut it. <laughs> Do the undercut. And I Do the fucking undercut. <laughs> Sorry. We'll get Sorry. to that. <laughs> I have a question to add on first. Not done obviously what I need is caffeine. Yeah, Thank go, you. Go, 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 go. What were you, was it society that you were craving something from? Or was it, usually it's like childhood stuff. So you say you're craving something. Have you identified what it was you were craving with, the, with this addiction? Uh, I feel like, Akash, that there is a sort of emptiness, hollowness at the heart of us. Why did my pronunciation elicit laughter? <laughs> I think he thinks you're about to call me out on something, but you might be. I don't no, know. I'm not. I thought you were going to call Akash empty and hollow. <laughs> no, no. And if you knew how much was... weight he has gained in the last few months, he is it's anything but empty or yeah, hollow. It's marriage, you yeah. know? It's fucking it's fills you up. And love. Fills you up in every way, stretches you out. Addiction is pain. Addiction yeah. begins with pain and addiction ends with pain. And it probably, given what you're, the, the most basic... Um, but the most basic, I want to say, palette mm. of emotions are going to be familial, I suppose. Mm -hmm. So it's going to feel like a sense of loss or lack. But I don't want that to sound like a critique of my own parents. Not that I can imagine either of them watching this. But like, you know, I don't <laughs> want them to, God, they've suffered enough. Yeah. Not, not, don't tell it the wrong way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're elderly. Yeah, we're all undercutting yeah, yeah. now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's, 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 it's a race to the bottom. <laughs> where will we end up? Um, so I reckon, yeah, I suppose it's an emotional thing. I mean, that's the, the treatment of addiction that I am familiar with is an attempt to address the underlying cause. It's normally pain, sense of in, uh, low self-esteem, mm -hmm. worthlessness. Mm -hmm. all things like that but i find these things to be pretty common among people outside of addiction as well and actually the solutions that recovery provide are effective for you know for people that don't have an explicit addiction because if you've had that bulimia i'm sure all of us have some sort of attachment yeah. something that we're using yeah, to yeah, hold yeah, ourselves yeah. together yeah. And, yeah. and if you find something that yeah. operates successfully within your culture then you're all right you know no stand one cares up comedy. stand up Less. comedy yeah. making money yeah. but, uh, but, uh, until latterly pursuit of consensual consensual sexual relationships all those kind of things were like they're sanctioned Nikia says, it seems to me that Sneeko and Russell both see some truths about the world but get really stuck on them when they could just accept it and move on with their lives. That's what it is. It's like there's no, I don't see any radical acceptance in any of their work yet, but I'm not upset about that because I think that's really normal. So I, I'm not really upset with that, but... Mm. It's only when you do stuff that fucks you up in an evident or criminal way that it's a problem, isn't it? Okay, so you remove those things, but you need to find something to transfer that addiction to, I imagine. Yeah. Okay. You wake up, if you will. Mm. Is, that, is that fair to say? It's exactly 100% accurate, Andrew, because okay. the 12th step of the system of recovery I believe in is having had a spiritual awakening yeah. as the, the result system. of these steps. It's about awakening, the yeah. suggestion being that you are in... I have a system that works, so he's talking about the AA program that works for him. Some kind of stupor. Now, that, if it's alcohol or drugs, I suppose that's obvious, but we can all become <laughs> spellbound through attachment. We can yeah. all find things to sort of hypnotize us. Yeah. And this awakening is, yeah, an awakening okay. to the reality of who you are in both its beauty, but also in its trauma and its flaws. And what about an awakening to like what existence is? Yes, I suppose that would also be true, oh. but tell and me how more we what fit you within existence. I guess what I'm trying to say is like, I have certain friends who have woken up, if you will, and they got there because 
they experienced some traumatic shit maybe as a child or throughout their life mm. and they were incredibly depressed and sad. And then they distracted themselves with drugs or addiction and then realized that that drugs and addiction just continued to make them incredibly sad. And they were forced because it was either killing themselves or finding a way to live within this structure that we call life. Mm. And they were forced to like analyze life in a different way and forced to like figure out what their maybe purpose is or if there is even a purpose, but they were really forced into being awakened. Yes. None of this is the levels yet. All of this is just like adulting. And yes. sometimes those friends have tons of empathy for people who aren't awoken yet. And sometimes they don't. And my question to you is, do you see someone who's not awake yet and go, well, maybe they don't need to wake up. Maybe they're not suffering in the way I was suffering that forced me to go through what I had to go through to wake up and figure out a way to basically continue living because it was death or this. No, we must all awaken. This is what I've learned from it. I feel like I'm lucky to have had the journey that I had in terms of being a smackhead and a crackhead because those things are extreme enough to warrant intervention. At some point, you have to stop it. Yeah. But I think what we're dealing with now are cult cultural modalities that keep us all sort of loosely numbed and distracted. Yeah. Like, I find it really hard to deal with drug addicts when I have to deal with them. Like, it really bugs me and annoys me. Sometimes maybe I'll... Like, part of my recovery is I have to, and it's wise that I Help do, others, right? Help yeah. the others. Oh, God, isn't it <laughs> yeah. Others. <laughs> not even them. You're not actually me. <laughs> okay, so right now they're just talking about normal adulting. So this is what I'm trying to say. The levels and adulting can sound like the same thing, but they're not. So a lot of people think they're fours or fives because they're adulting. That's not what that is. We have lost a conception with like what adulting can look like. So right now that just sounds like self-awareness and some therapy, which sounds great. But like realizing that you're making choices and can make different choices don't always come from the why. So the levels only represent the why of introspection, extrospection with the person, the individual. But this, what he's saying, is like what Destiny was telling me the other day, how everyone has purpose and everyone has like a great talent and everyone has a thing that they must like find and be better for. All of this is not the levels. That's great. I love that for everyone. But none of that has to do with radically accepting like bubbles, right? It has to do with like, where's my place in my bubble? So they're still like navigating, where's my place? Where's my thriving within the bubble? Versus I'm just saying like, do we even know there's a bubble? And like, that's the thing that I don't think people understand really. They know it. They use the word. They use the word bubble. But yet they contribute to society in the same, within the same rules of the bubble. You're still existing when I'm not there yeah. and I've got to do stuff like, so <laughs> sometimes I like when it's hardcore when they're proper like down on the streets, lesion covered, smackhead, needle out the arm, missing an eye. Oh, I'm all over them. Yeah. Oh, oh, I'm like Jesus. I'm, <laughs> like, Jesus, if it was a WWF version of Jesus. Yeah. Like I'm over there, I'm helping a man's on, not too close, you know, like giving them everything that's required and that. Yeah, yeah. But like, what about all, all people have unconscious tendencies? If you're not doing what you're doing consciously, you are likely doing it unconsciously. Yeah. Sometimes we don't know what our, motiv what our motivations are. All these conflagrations in Advertent and irrelevant, in the, even in the quotidian, some skirmish in the street or in a parking lot. You know, what is it really? What is it really when someone gets out their car ready to kill you because yeah. you cut them up in traffic? First, my whole fucking life, and now this, yeah. and now this, and like every single bit of pain, you're willing to express it all in that moment. So if you are awake, you are able to observe, oh, look, I'm becoming anxious now, I'm afraid now. If I come into a situation like this, like a sort awake, self aware of a very mal environment. You are all strong, gifted people. I'm aware, like, I hope that, you know, you've not brought me here to fuck me up and annihilate me. That's why I came in camouflage. Yeah. Should it be required, I could just slink off like a leopard. But like, a, but like a, you know, like I'm stay yeah. conscious. I stay yeah. conscious and then I operate on these principles. If I, in my heart, I'm not trying to be mean to anybody, yeah, yeah. I feel like I've got a contract. Like, so if I come in and I start yeah. saying nasty shit, then I feel God's got my back if I'm behaving yeah. properly. Yeah. That's what my life showed me. Life has shown me. I, I asked that question more because I find it like when I'm interviewing somebody like you who I obviously respect, but more so than that, I don't feel like I can bullshit you at all. So I'm very specific in the things that I'm asking you because I feel like you see bullshit. So. Uh, Jord with the, or is it Jord? With the super chat, thank you so much. Destiny fears the bubble, so you know it's legit. It's something, like that's the thing is like, there's, there's like a, I love this banter. I love the way they're all going back and forth. I'm curious on what will be I'm, oh, okay, let's just keep watching. Sometimes bullshit is required for social lubrication. Yes. Right? So we do it in life. We're getting a fucking coffee, this, that, the other. B. West says Russell always gives me cult leader vibes. Okay, I'm going to say this. I'm going to say this, and I mean it in the nicest way possible. I do not think the internet knows what a cult leader is. Because Russell Brand is nothing like a cult leader. Like, I've watched so much of his shit. There's nothing about him that's a script. A cult leader is not a person with a following. You guys know that a cult f leader is not Oprah. Just because Oprah has a cult following and because Oprah makes you say, I'm an O mom and I'm an O, like, that's not what a cult leader is, right? Like, you guys know that a cult 
a real cult leader, right? There's like requirements for a cult. So I don't know why people think like I'm a cult leader or Russell's a cult leader or why we're even throwing that word around. And I'm not trying to go ham on this commenter right now, girl. Like I'm not trying to go ham. But I'm trying to say like why. I want to know why people – do you guys watch documentaries on cult leaders? They're very interesting people. They are not normal. Like the way they talk about people isn't normal. The way they have conversations. Like <clears throat> Russell Brand comes off as a really funny person who had a really intense life and is just sharing about it. He feels really normal to me. He feels woo-woo. But a cult leader vibes? Like, I want to know. That's like, for me, I think that's like saying he has rapey vibes. And I don't understand how he has rapey vibes. Because, like, cult leader is, like, really bad. It's, like, a really bad. Like, you should not. Like, cults are very difficult to manage. And at the same time, um, there could be good people who are in cults. So, like, I don't want to sit here and, you know what I'm saying. Um, <clears throat> but, yeah, I wonder why people say that about people. But there are certain people... And you, almost immediately upon meeting you, I was like, okay, there's going to be no room for bull bullshit right now. So I have to ask you the things that I'm really curious about yeah, and that's... tell you the things that I'm genuinely curious about. Even if I look dumb doing it or maybe I look smart, it doesn't matter. As long as it's pure and authentic, I think it works. Yes, you have to do that. It's necessary. And you obviously do it to a degree naturally anyway. Otherwise, you wouldn't have been able to enjoy the success you do either as in this format or with the live stand-up <sighs> format. What I feel like, like I'm, what people do, and like you were kind enough to say about when I went on them normal TV shows yeah. where it's all graphics and glistening, is like they think I oh, like you're going to be an idiot because they think oh, like you're a celebrity person. But that's not what I'm from. That's mm -hmm. not. I was 30 before I made any money out of this business. Before that, I was having to live in very, very different circumstances and I was born in different circumstances and they left my mark on me. Now, I'm not trying to be Ice Cube here. I'm like from Grey's in Essex. It's sort of a bit like dull. It's not is Ice Cube your idea of like the rough life? Secretly, <laughs> I, was, I was sort of like Ice Cube. You know how rough it was? Oh my God, I was straight out of Compton. I had to nip back. I'd left the gas on. Back in the Compton. <laughs> Put a few coins in the meter. Yeah. Out of Com and Compton again. Yeah. No, it's not like I'm saying it's sort of super street. I'm English. I'm white. Yeah. All of those things. But what I'm saying is it's like that there's a degree of poverty and there's addiction and all of those things yeah. and then having to acknowledge like the amount of personal failings and learning to deal things like authenticity and integrity yeah, are yeah. for me incontrovertible ideas I'm still wrapped up and strapped up in all manner of hopeless flaws and stuff but mm. what I do have now is I think um, presence I'm present yeah. and I'm like I'm, I'm watching yeah. what's happening and also you don't have to like you know make excuses for your struggles just because you're white like white people have to deal with a lot yeah like, sometimes the industry doesn't buy their special you know what I mean yeah. there's a lot of struggle out there sometimes remember... we gotta listen to minorities complain <laughs> <laughs> that's annoying Every single day, we can't say anything about it. For just five dollars, you can get Andrew some earplugs, <laughs> so that he can block off the complaining of the minority members who he's kindly put into this. Thank you, Jordan, for the super chat again. Wait, this isn't a cult. Damn, I bought Kool Aid. You don't need to buy Kool Aid. The sex cult provides condoms, contraceptives in general, and lots of Kool Aid. Don't worry. This show. It's not his name in the title. It's not Andrew Schultz's flagrant. There's all sorts of people here. <laughs> Two of whom are plainly not white, and even the one who is white has got a very good natural hair lift. Thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> that is true. That is a good root lift. Yeah, I just got no, it just done got today. Incredible. Yeah, it was incredible. Yeah, it was in Turkey. I got it done. It was amazing. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, we're going to take a break for a second to save you no. some money with honey. Okay, simple as this. Don't. When you went on the shows, yeah. <clears throat> if, if you reflect and you're honest about it, do you, do you think you leaned into being unassuming because you liked winning them over? I feel what I feel like if I go. What like, is a winning? Like, as, as an adult looking back. Like the Paxman interview I saw was a very similar one. It's a political one, yeah. but it was very, and he didn't play up the goofy as much. But it was, again, somebody trying to get him and talk him in circles, and then you talk them in circles. Do you lean into kind of being aloof? Because you know I can win that way, and the win is that much more satisfying. Actually, I wish I could say that because that sounds really cool. But like, it's much more this. I, I'm I'm involved in a negotiation with fear quite a lot of the time. Ah. Like, so I'm not like I don't walk into environments and think, yeah, fuck all you. Like I'm a bit like, oh shit, you know what I mean? So I'm ah. dealing with the reality of that. I'm dealing with the reality of fear, like not in a hopefully a high pitched anxious way, but I'm observing the fear, which I've come through mm. training and time to regard as your body is energizing now in case oh. you have to be fast. You know, dealing oh. with what oh. adrenaline is mm -hmm. rather than uh, pathology adrenaline into a neurotic state but oh oh ow, fuck my jaw keeps like popping out so like oh my god that fucking blew just now fuck um really fast what he just said is really great great it has to do with like what i always say about like pulling yourself into layers and recognizing that your body is having experiences that like your consciousness isn't so like uh, my body holds so much of the fucking trauma and fear that I will have experiences that I'm like, why are we doing this right now? What's going on? And then the body's just like, we're having a panic attack. And I'm like, why? And it's like, because it feels like it needs to. So I have to like logic my way out of being triggered a lot of the time. <laughs> Y'all, we watched the first three episodes of She-Hulk and I fucking hate Marvel. And the first episode was so weird. But then the 
wait, was the first or second episode? They mentioned DBT. They mentioned DBT. Like, they mentioned DBT in She-Hulk. And they're like, it helps with emotional regulation. I was like, yes, it does, girl. Yes, it does, girl. Like, I was so fucking excited. They meant, I, I told my brothers, I was like, that's the therapy I had. That's the therapy I had. Like, I was so excited. It makes Borderline and the Hulks. Like, this is, guys, this is so, I never thought about my Borderline that way. I never thought about my Borderline being like the Hulk. But it is literally like that, where you spend your whole life trying not to turn into the Hulk just because you're, like, misunderstanding a situation or feel threatened. And then he talked about how DBT helps with that y'all so good but that's i feel like what russell's saying too is like he's constantly fighting the fear within his body that like need to have adrenaline pumping through his veins like that ability to have a conversation with yourself is so good and again has nothing to do with the levels but it's very good i don't feel like i'm gonna go in there and i'm gonna fuck him up <laughs> although in my mind i do think when i'm dealing with someone like jeremy paxman who's like i don't know he's like a, maybe he's like anderson cooper or something like that yeah. he's like a political commentator and he again was like, like trying yeah, to get you trying to get me yeah, yeah. Right. And also that stuff. The other thing is, which are, like, is I believe in that stuff. I believe that like that primarily political discourse is carried out in a way to exclude ordinary people. And even the distractional tactics of turning people against one another on the basis of race or gender ignores the crucial arguments around class that most ordinary people have more in common with one another than they have in, in common with the elites that govern them. And that's always kept off the table while the they exacerbate our differences to turn us against one another. So when I'm like actually confronting one of those people, I think, fucking no, I'm talking to them right now. Uh... And, like, so when I'm like, I try to stay very, very calm. And then if they personally fucking do me. It's on. Like, yeah, that's it now. I'm ready. Let's yeah, go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's rude. Like, yeah. <laughs> I'm an Englishman. That's, yeah. that's a gauntlet around the chops, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's so what it is. Is I don't go in there sort of overly confident, but I do go in. I really like the self awareness. Rookie of the Violet Hour. Oh, let's go. Thank you for the super chat. <clears throat> I think it's that the rhetoric or actions taken by cults and cult leaders are similar to influencers and we try to find the patterns in these things. So true. That's okay. That's totally fair. Actually, that is a great fucking example. Thank you for the super chat of the kinds of things we should talk about when I talk about my accusations podcast, because I actually think that's what's happening, which is called stereotyping, which is very not helpful, right? Like don't judge a book by its cover. It's like kind of where forgetting the basics I actually think because of the internet we started to forget the basics where we're like "Ooh, looks like a racist sounds like a racist is a racist but like the problem is, is that because these words are changing and they don't hold any weight the dilemma I'm having is that even though it looks like what you think a racist is I'm not sure we define that the same way you know what I mean like I'm not gonna lie my bros and I went to a burger place yesterday and all we did was talk shit on all the white people there we did we literally looked around we were like do you see this white family this what is this decision they're making? And then we were all joking about how we're too Middle Eastern to be at this burger place. But I understand that to anyone listening to that conversation, first, it would be crazy to the left because they'd be like, or maybe to the right. Actually, it'd be crazy to people because they're like, you're so white passing. Why are you even talking like this? But two, look, I live in a really white town, sort of. It's like mixed, but like there is like primarily white people. And they're very different than my family. Like when I look at them, I'm like, ooh, this is not my family. Right? So, like, what are they? They're white. They're different from me. Even though my white skin says to some people that I'm the same as them, they are not me and I am not them. But on a, like, macro level of the universe, of course we're all just each other because we're all just people. Right? So I think that's what's sort of funny about these conversations is, like, I understand. I totally get it. Looks like a cult leader, sounds like a cult leader, is a cult leader, but, like, not really. Right? And they with a sort of a set of beliefs. Yeah. That I Wait, Tosca says, have you seen Russell on MSNBC? What do you think? You mean like just like as an interview on the news channel? Is that what you mean? I sort of hold on to. So something like that morning job. I weren't in a very good mood, actually, that, and that the morning. morning yeah, 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 yeah. That one where it's that lady with the blonde hair, yeah, Micah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, like, yeah. when, like when I went on that, I didn't feel that good. And, and I, I weren't particularly happy with the trousers I was wearing, <laughs> to be honest. And, <laughs> Uh, and like, uh, so like when on top of that, they was started mugging me off. I thought, oh no, they, no. Yeah, they thought that they were trying to have like, uh, I think they thought they were going to have fun with you. Like they thought that you yeah. were going to come in, they were going to tease you. Yeah, you were going to be the clown and yeah. they were just going to kind of laugh at you. And I, you didn't look that happy going into it, which is always no. funny when you're trying to convince people to come to your happy show. You know? <laughs> yeah, I'm and terrible it, at that. And, and buddy, there was a moment where you just uh, decided, you're like, okay, well, this interview is about to get taken over right now. And I'm going to tell these people who I am and it's going to be really interesting. And yeah. they fucking folded. Mm. Yeah. They got nothing to lock at them people. No disrespect to them. They're probably all like beautiful human beings. Actually. No, didn't he That's kill only... his secretary or something oh, well, like that? that? Well, that doesn't seem. Are they talking about the interview now? Is that what they're discussing? Is like some interview where he pwned? 
business Japanese businessman says I think that's the big reason why people dislike you and destiny people like you and destiny because you don't fit squarely into any group or people who are looking for signs of a group to put you in will see that it is disingenuous or as a sign of insecurity it feels like un uncanny valley to them for sure I actually think that's why destiny will struggle as he moves forward in like the news world, like he could try to be alternative about it, but people want some sort of rule and consistency to feeling comfortable in how they consume their media. So even now, like with what I'm doing here, like people will have an idea of how things should be consumed. People are, people want things to be consumable to them. And so when you're a content creator, you're really got to pick, are you going to make content that's consumable to you, to your audience, to one person in your audience? And so I think that, like Destiny and I are digestible to some people, but not to the majority and definitely not to the normal people, not to normies. I'm right. Though Destiny is much more acceptable to normies unless you know the details of his life, then not really. <laughs> Was the secretary particularly inefficient? <laughs> <laughs> Was there a tribunal process? <laughs> Was there an opportunity to discuss yeah. KPIs? Uh, You're not fine. delivering in these, oh, no, straight to execution. Yeah, no. <laughs> not justice around. on an individual level. So how, how can we make sure that you don't run for government so you can still do the great things that you're doing. Well, I think Because people are going to fucking beg you to do it. I think he's got to watch the old ego. Same as you, How do you check it? It's not going well. It's out of control. <laughs> I'm going out wearing Cute. nighttime clothes <laughs> for Southern Bells. <laughs> <laughs> I'm dressed like a Tennessee Williams heroine and a wrestler <laughs> combined. I mean, like, I suppose how how I'm going to do it is like, I remember this, like, this is what I fundamentally believe is that those sort of systems with an apex person, like, you know, presidents, prime minister, monarchs, that's not representative. The centralization of power is not a solution. So if like, I, this happened before in our country, I did the, when I done that Jeremy Paxman thing, mate, like, like there was a lot, suddenly a lot of heat and I said stuff, there's no point in voting, you'll get the same sort of party yep, anyway, they're all paid for in corporate. Le Leonora says, why do you and your brothers judge white families, though? What's wrong with them? Nothing's wrong with them, but everything's wrong with anyone who isn't me, right? Like, nothing's wrong with anybody, but what's wrong about people is anything that isn't me, right? Because, like, I'm a human, and we want people to be like us, so nothing is wrong with white families, but y'all raise your kids different, and that's great. I love that for you, <laughs> but y'all raise your kids different. And that's fine. We were criticizing how they, like certain ones, like when you watch a movie and you see the trash family and the not trash family or the bad guy and not the bad guy, I want to know who these families think they are in the story because I think people's tropes are so clear. My trope is clear. Baby J said it. You fit into the group of people who don't have a group. Exactly. I too am stereotyped and tropeable. That's what I'm trying to say. So when these like families, and I see the way they let their kids be, I'm like, what family stereotype trope do you think you are right now? I'm not saying you have to change. There's nothing wrong with you thriving in your bubble. I'm just saying I don't fuck with it for a reason. And like, it's because in my bubble, it would create more chaos than positivity. You know what I mean? For interest, it's all bullshit, yeah. right? And it really blew up and they talked about me in the Houses of Parliament in our country and all of that. And what I should have thought, what I should have thought was, oh, this is amazing. I'm voicing things that a lot of people are feeling. Yeah. And I did feel that for a while. And then I thought, you're really important, Russell. And what do you think is important? And then it went all wrong. It vibrated too quickly and I span off out of the road. So like, uh, yeah. I won't, I'm not going to do that again. In a sense, how do all of us manage the challenge of knowing that we are infinitesimous, intim in, well, perhaps by not being able to pronounce a single word. No, <laughs> but, 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 this is, yeah, this knowing, is the dark shit that, oh, go, go, go. Know go. that you are infinitesimally small, yes. but also that all reality is held within your consciousness yeah. there is nothing that you are aware of that you do not know about like oh, the, whether it's the big bang or the dinosaurs yep. or uh, political assassinations yep. or quantum physics all of that exists yeah. within your individual yeah. awareness is no, you think no, about? No. it's like i think the trickiest thing about like essentially waking up and i've seen a lot of celebrities sometimes suffer this i think jim carrey suffered from this when right. he woke up he got dark when right. he realized i think his coping mechanism for the world was well nothing's important nothing matters <laughs> and when you start really believing that you go Oh, fuck. Well, nothing matters. Well, why should I wake up? Why should I go to the grocery store? Why should I be in a yeah, comedy? The nihilism do... is crippling. The nihilism is yeah. fucking crippling. And there's another side to it, which I think he's at right now, which is like, okay, nothing matters, but life is what we make of it. And we need connectivity. We need relationships. We need community. It makes us feel good to help one another and treat one another good. So like, but getting from nihilism to this is important. What a fucking joy it is that we get to be here. A lot of people don't make that jump. That's fucking tough, man. But we have to make that jump, Andrew, and there's a reason to make it in that that jump is anticipated in all of the great ideologies. In Islam, it? in Christianity, in yes. Buddhism, they tell yes. you this. It's an illusion, but you have to pop. Okay, still not talking about the levels for the fucking record. Just talking about two bubbles that are having an awakening within their own bubbles. Still not talking about the levels. If you all think this is, this is the greatest video of how the levels are not about this. Like this is all the language the levels could use, but we're, I'm not talking about any of this. 
I'm talking about even more than this. Even their version of nihilism, like nothing matters. Jim Carrey, I think, was a person who everyone was like, Brittany, is he a five? I don't really have any example of this. I mostly have an example of him being a nihilistic three, a nihilistic two. But this is what I'm saying. They could, this is still, I'm not hearing any levels talk yet. I'm just hearing bubble talk, which is great and very important. Brittany, would you say that Andrew is saying what Andrew is saying is level four? No. Well, yes, maybe. That's the thing. Andrew could be having a conversation. I could be saying the same things Andrew is saying and be talking about the levels, but Andrew is not talking about the levels right now. He's just talking about that bubble and becoming aware in your own bubble that like, oh, we're all the same and like, we have a blah, blah, blah. But like, it's not, it's not about, it's not the levels. Participate as if it is real. Yes. You have to find the beauty in it. You are creating reality while you are living it. You are what is God. This? The, the God. No! What is this? I fucking sorry, earphone users. I hate this. What is this? You are a God. The Father and I are one. It's like trying to tell you simultaneously. Yes, it's meaningless, but you invest it with meaning. You create purpose. The yes. Tao. You are the path that you are walking. So in a way, Jim Carrey's got no excuse for going all dark. No, but he's that, doing the mask. Mate. Not that one with a scratchy poster. <laughs> <laughs> we want Ace Ventura. Not when huh? you go all scary. No, are you by my door? Oh, it's an image. I mean, like Jim, Jim Carrey, bonafide a genius, eh? Like a proper yes. old school fucking physical comic genius yes. vibrating on a very, very high frequency. Yes. His fascination with Kaufman, a situationist. Kaufman's work is about, oh my God, none of this is real. It's ridiculous. Yeah. We could just do anything. We can make chaos. You can suddenly stop participating in the sanctioned rules of reality. Yes. It will fall apart because it's consensual. Faith is a component of the fucking stock exchange of economics. Uh, as science itself, at its most fundamental levels, the, the level of quantum physics requires consciousness and belief in order for it to collapse between waves and particles. Okay, you know, okay. so what... The the challenge we have is to invest it with meaning while recognizing it's meaningless, or as Christ says, in the world, but not of it. And I can see how, and my personal opinion, I can't, on my own, I go fucking mental. I, go, I fall down a hole into the solipsism and the nihilism. I lose yeah. my connection. I lose my erection. Okay. I become unbearable. I become unwearable. I can't live within it. I need meaning. I need connection. And the yes. only place I can find it is if I sort of think, oh, fucking hell, Andrew's a human being the same as me. He's yep. got the same life as me. He's got, yes. he's got a past. He's got things he's having to carry. Every single person I look at, they're the same as me. They've got to carry on living their life. And it don't seem like that when I'm lost in my own solipsistic self obsessiveness. Yes. But like that's why that 12 step stuff's good Andrew because on one level it says awaken awaken to the fact that your life in the past was unlivable yep. and now the secret be of service to others yep. don't live a life you know and I'm not I, I have no means got this cracked because I still spend a lot of my time thinking oh, yep. I want this I don't want that the devotee of my preferences dedicated to what I want and what I don't want but thankfully I've got this fucking system that continually reminds me why are you thinking about yourself all the time it gives a shit you're yeah. gonna die you're gonna die it doesn't matter so why wouldn't you run for office Become the elites you hate. Become oh, those elites. Nah. Get in the system yeah. and change it. But good, it's a great. You see how he just ranted and raved, and it could literally sound like the levels, but is not the levels. Let's see how he answers this question about elections. Question. <clears throat> I'm curious your answer, but please don't. <laughs> don't you think that what we should do is people that have the ability for amplification is try and find people that we think are legit. And then, like, give Find them the some heat sociopaths. and shine. Yes. Legit sociopaths. Okay, okay. Yeah. What, if, what if we it's... audition them? What, what, but what if it's this? What if it's like we we exercise our demands to a point where they have to fulfill them, they being the elites or they being the people that are controlling. And I think that's the only way to make change, right? Is that we just go, we want this thing that's so bad. That's why I loved the idea of not voting. <laughs> if everybody not voted, if we didn't vote in mass, it would be the loudest way to say this system is not working for us. Is too far. I mean, we don't vote in mass. They don't they, not, don't not they want us to not vote in, in America? Isn't if, that the whole thing if, that right no, now? No, no, they don't. They want their people to vote. They want old people to vote. Republicans want old people to vote. Right. Liberals want their people to vote. It's that's what we want to vote. We want the other side enough. If everybody's like, yo, this electoral college is fucking stupid. Yeah. Nothing is actually going to get done. You're all the same. And everybody he was like, we're not voting. It would be so globally embarrassing yeah. that things would have to change at the very least. Yeah. And particularly if you coupled that with don't vote, don't pay back any of your debts. Like, stop <laughs> paying all debts all immediately. Right. Stop <laughs> paying all tax. Yeah. One person, don't well, pay tax. tax. Yeah, you're going to okay, my plan was that we all just didn't go to work for a month. But yeah, sure. Like, don't pay tax. Like, you know, I totally, I understand you could wreck the whole global economy. But why won't we do this? Because people don't want to. I don't believe in the elites and I don't believe in the powerful. I believe people are given power by the constituents or they take power through manipulation, same thing. And we manipulate ourselves into thinking that they are the elites when really they're just like us with a different game. So because I believe in bubbles and because I believe that like we're all operating in a different reality, not literally, like I think there's one objective reality, but we're all perceiving our reality differently based off of our lived experiences and the chemistry in our brains. We're having different relationships with reality. So, ooh, Discord says sanity does not sound like this. That's the problem I'm having. Is like this doesn't sound like normal people talking, but also it might not sound like normal people talking. Um, 
<laughs> Thank you, Discord, for clipping all my facial expressions during that moment. Um, I believe in a community. Discord, quote, I believe in community. Also, I want to destroy society. Well, that's the thing is like, I think radical acceptance and like fiveness is accepting that society is community and community is society. And it's difficult to do this well. And there is no answer. And that thinking there's a magical answer, like blaming the elites, is the mistake everyone is making. Everyone is making the mistake of thinking that we already are not doing an amazing fucking job. Like, yes, it's a mess, but it's a mess because we are a mess. Humans as a species is a mess, and we're all participants in that. Look, I have a lot of, like, disabled um, people in my audience, and I have been, like, before I hired Len, my editor, who's amazing, and if you want to support Len and pay his paycheck, thank you so much. We appreciate that. I have to make money to pay Len. Join our Discord uh, through Patreon or even leave a like on this video. It makes a difference. It really does. He's been killing it with the thumbnail game. When I was looking for Len, when I was looking for an editor, I went looking in my own community because I like to uplift my social circles, right? I try to impact the six foot radius around me. And I asked around to a lot of people in my audience who were disabled and working from home or didn't have a job because I wanted to see if they were interested. And um, I had asked a few people. So everyone that I had asked gave no indicator uh, or desire to work. They actually said to me like, oh no, it's cool. I get like, cause I asked them, I was like, oh, this is how I did it though. So this might be a little manipulative, but like, this is how I did it. Cause I didn't know what their work ethic was because they didn't have jobs. I said, do you want to work? Like what would be your dream job if you could have one? And they'd be like, oh, I don't really have like a dream job. I'd actually just never want to work if I could. And I'm like, oh, okay. I didn't hire any of those people because I didn't want somebody with an attitude of, I'd rather just not work. I'm a worker bee, I wanna work. The idea of not working pisses me off. So I needed somebody I could hire that I could rely on. And I can rely on Len because Len is a worker bee, like me. Like Len and I have this like thing, and I hope he's okay with me talking about how much I love him. But I love him so much because he's so reliable and he's so ready to work. He actually like that podcast I did about labor and love, like him and I talked about that, how like labor is love. So I went around looking in my community for who I could hire. What I'm trying to say is this solidifies in my mind that a community is not really possible as efficient all this, like all the way, like it's not efficient to just rely on the community being perfect. Because like my community is wonderful, but some of y'all don't wanna work. Some of you all don't want to participate in society. Some of y'all don't want any responsibilities, which is fine. But then that's the game, right? The game is why should people invest in your inability to invest in yourself? We shouldn't because we're individuals living on a planet and none of this fucking matters. It's a construct. But along the way, if we want to gather together as a community or a society, no matter how small or big, and pick and choose who's going to be on our team and pick and choose those team members based off their efficiency and work levels, you know, then that is going to normally and naturally alienate people and make people feel not accepted. So when we're having these conversations, how are you supposed to feel accepted in a community that isn't going to thrive with you in it? Maybe you're meant to thrive in a different community. You know, Maiden Monster says, give Len a, a raise fund. Love it. Thank you for the super chat. Thank you. We love Len. We love Len so much. He is one of the bestest. Down. Yeah. But a thousand, 10,000, 100,000 people, stop yeah. paying. A, join this movement. We're not doing it out of nihilistic selfishness. It's not just some libertarian whim yeah, to yeah. save a little bit of cash back on an on a ATM. Yeah. This is, we're not cooperating with your system anymore. Yeah. Your, like, your economic systems are faith-based. These are our, and, and I like the use of the word demand because it's gangster, but it should be a manifesto. <laughs> uh -oh. Uh -oh. <laughs> uh -oh. Sorry, Casey, great question. Can't work in itself be a bubble? Yes, hustle bubble, work bubble, um, get that bag. Those are all bubbles about work. In like, America, we're not allowed to say that. We're not allowed to say manifesto. Nah, it's, all right, constitution, new there constitution. Go. There we new go. New constitution. Say like, you know, like, in fact, the principles are already enshrined. Just do the fucking shit that's already written down. Yeah. Allow people to have control of their own communities, control of their own lives. Allow people to, like, be, there has been no vision in politics, I think, since the death of the great ideas of the last century, since the death of, capital, of, of fascism and communism. No one is saying this is how we could live. You can organize and run your own life. People don't think that they could be spending their time in leisure. We're all defined by our work. Our education systems are about preparation for the labor market. You're right. Right, written off at that point. I have a question about that. In terms of Real spending quick, your sorry. time. Okay, go. I'm talking about embarrassing, and you're talking about Fight Club. Let's shame the politicians. Yeah. Let's kill them. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I don't 
don't think he was president. I think he was like a dictator. I think he would do way better. You're dressed like Gaddafi already. Like, I feel like you would do perfect. And I think it ended really well for him on that yeah. weekend of Bernie's yeah. Jeep ride where they just all these dead body about yeah. in the desert. <laughs> Am I still in charge? That's what happens when you have female security. You know what I mean? That was his issue. Yeah. Yeah. That was his whole thing. He only had hot models to block you. Like, that's not going to work. You know? So, you, have you ever seen like a uh, Colonel Gaddafi addressing like some uh, Arab summit where it's like all the leaders of the Arabian nations and they're going, listen, we need to fucking step up because the West getting proper leery, you know? So, like, they've killed Saddam Hussein. I don't yeah. know who's going to be next. Yeah. Well, we do now. Yeah, 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 yeah. Poor old Colonel Gaddafi jostled along all naked yeah. and dead. <laughs> Shouldn't have happened. It's out of order. It's a human being with rights and feelings. I apologize for that. But you did put him in a comedic position when you said I look like a dictator. I'll That's what we do here. I mean, you get it. You're the guy who went to MTV dressed as Bin Laden on September 12th. <laughs> you get it. It was, it was too it. soon. I it was it. too <laughs> soon. <laughs> that was too soon. Have you done it today? Comedy's timing. It would have killed. <laughs> you don't do that yet. That was too soon. I apologize again. But in hindsight, when 20 years pass or whatever, pretty funny. I mean, yeah. Well, I, I, that is, if nothing else. That's exactly the argument I made in the tribunal. <laughs> <laughs> I was saying, 20 years' time, there will be streaming services that will look upon me as a kind of profit dictator. <laughs> then who will be laughing? Uh, yeah. I think we gravitate towards leisure. Yeah, le yeah le 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 I leisure, leisure. Leisure, leisure. Potato, potato. Yeah, people want to chill. I think that if you look at the course of history, you see ancient societies and what they gravitate to. You're a comedian. Like, this is what I'm saying. I'm saying, why are we talking shit in any capacity about people who just want to be complicit when we're all doing that? Like, most of us do that anyways. And we do it in different ways. It's because I don't believe in altruism, so I don't really believe in this idea. But, like, I know what Andrew's saying. Andrew obviously is going to want something bigger than himself. Maybe it's babies. Maybe it's a political career. I don't know. But, like, right now, we're just, like, comedians chilling. Even Dave Chappelle is only impacting his bubble. Like, even if you think you're a great philosopher, you're only impacting your bubble, which is great and which is what you should be doing. I just feel like when people have these conversations, it just sounds so much, like, more important than it is. It's never about how do you help yourself and then hopefully you help others. It's always, like, what's this great grand thing we can do together? And I'm, like, probably just exist and not kill anyone. I don't know. To. And I'm shocked that like the British haven't figured this out yet because they've mm. been around the world, they've seen everything in the world, and they still keep working for some reason. But like you look at Italian, you look at the Greeks. Because we the like Greeks. to work. The Greeks are literally just gonna go, okay, we're not gonna work. And then Germany's like, do we have to bail them out again? They're like, <laughs> can you? And they're like, fine. And then they just keep not working. They don't change a single thing because they understand it's fun to hang out with your family, eat nice cheese, drink nice wine, enjoy the beach. Italians, same thing. This idea that the French take fucking months off in the summer to do something. This is like novel to Americans because we're young, we're immigrants, right? We're trying to get the money. I think eventually we all gravitate towards the things in life that we actually do value, which is time with the people you love mm -hmm. and indulgences, but not to a point where they are addictions. <laughs> you can't, like indulging in a sunset, can you get addicted to it? No. But it's important. What a lovely person. Because what you're describing, of course, is freedom. That uh, people want to be free. And what I really, like as a touring comic, what I've noticed when you're like, and it's mostly in my country because I've not been out traveling and stuff, but like what I've learned from people is people want to be left the fuck alone. Yeah. They want to be left alone. Just leave people alone and mm -hmm. let them Now that sort of tends towards the kind of in, in the, your national political rubric, the kind of Republican right wing small government stuff. But without, like, the reason the argument between the communists and the anarchists is that, that without some sort of centralized state power, the people have no true representative against the might of corporate and financial interests. But of course, what we find ourselves now is that the state and the corporate world are essentially in alliance so that people have no representation anyway. Well, you don't need you know, the state. You, just... you need, you, I guess the unions is the equal and opposite reaction to corporate power. I reckon you're right, Andrew. I reckon that there needs to be a, a confederacy of delegated power where the true democracy can operate. So this community, like the, where you have true confederacies and assemblies where people say, this is how our community want to run things. This is how, we, but there are, there is a necessity for some municipal governance. There is a requirement for yeah. you know, roads need to be run. There needs to be some understanding of military, of law and order. But my, my sense is that, and when they've tried these experiments, there's been some success, is that if you allow people to govern their own communities, they do it relatively successful, successfully. And the thing that perhaps agitates me more than anything else about our current establishment in our current system is the assumption at its heart of misanth misanthropy, that people are not good, that people are stupid. What is misanthropy? Misanthropy people is a hatred of yeah. people. Okay. Like the meaning that they don't like us. What they think we're like stupid. Yeah. They think we're dumb. They think we can't run our own lives. That's right. what bugs me most of all. That with the whole censorship of the left thing, that people aren't able to watch something and go, oh, that's probably a joke or that's mm. not a joke, but I don't agree with it. You're almost infantilizing like, people. Infantilizing yeah. us, yeah. keeping us numb and dumb and consuming. So we're just a node at the end of the line. All you are is that you're just there to consume sugary food and sugary shit. No, mm. no. We want to do these things. You literally just said it. Like, they, like, we just want to do them. We want to, like, for those who want to be free, you do not want to be lazy. Discord just said that freedom is not laziness. Like, to be free, you have to work very fucking hard. To be um, lazy, you just have to have somebody taking care of you and enabling your bad behavior. But, like, we are choosing to be lazy by 
not like but it doesn't matter like it doesn't for me it just doesn't matter like it doesn't matter if you're choosing your life like I actually don't care what you do with your life I'm much more lenient in existence because I just think this is the one life you have and then you die so I don't mind if you spend your particular existence being lazy I probably wouldn't marry you we could probably be friends depending on how lazy you are but laziness can also be disgusting because it's just like there comes a point where like I'm just disgusted with your choices but then that's all subjective because it just irks my values not like some objective value Mm -hmm. control over your unlike destiny who was saying like c.s lewis was saying like there has to be like a greater sense of like obligation to the self and like humanity to do right by humanity i just like i'm not in this obligation mindset i just don't believe in it because if everything's a construct and we're all just making it up and we're doing our best then like why should i tell somebody else you have to like do your best it's just like you are by existing right community and what you described there that model where people just live their lives according to their fucking will and their freedoms and spend time with their family that's not ridiculous that's what basically everybody wants i think but how do you afford that how do you afford it because the countries that are doing that are not in the best economic state though they might be in the best emotional state well because you have to look at what the economic history of that situation is and like there was a after the 2008 crash where the democrat party bailed out the banks in a way that was a fundamental betrayal of the entire ethos that they purported to have and in my opinion laid the pathway for trump's ascendancy what happened in europe at that time is there's that right okay wait brit says i feel like addiction and, and numbing comes as an adverse reaction to not feeling free and on top of that uh, you also, like, the, the hedonism aspect. Do you guys know hedonism is, like, my worst fears that I'm going to fall into a pit of hedonism and die? That's why my DMT trip was freaky. Because they were like, we're all going to, like, dance our way to death, you know? And I was like, I don't want to die this way. I don't want to die a hedonist. And Destiny doesn't either. Destiny said that to me. Like, he wants to do more than just, like, getting trapped in the hedonistic bubble. True. I want that as well. Isn't the hedonistic, isn't it, like, self-pleasuring? Isn't it kind of nice to think everyone else is the reason your life sucks except for you? Isn't it kind of self-congratulatory? Isn't it sort of, like, ego-boosting to go around being like, the elites, the elites, the elites? To me, it is. It's like, okay, you're, like, basking in the orgasm of, like, pointing fingers. And I'm bored by it. And I just don't get it. But at the same time, I guess you could say that's suffering, so it can't be hedonism. But, like, what's a little hedonism without some suffering? I don't know. I don't know of populist British party, or not British, excuse me, European parties. There was Syriza in Greece, like yeah. that, that, this dude called Yanis Varoufakis and his partner. They were elected on a popular mandate of basically, we ain't fucking paying them banks back. Yeah. They all fuck off, yeah. right? And they got to, they, the people elected them. They went to the EU. The EU went, you're fucking giving us that money. Yeah, like, yeah, like, it's yeah, over. Yeah, 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 yeah. And that Yanis Varoufakis, who ran it, you should have him on one time. Like when he came on, he said that when he went to the EU, he said he realized no one in, in the establishment has any real power except for the power afforded to them by their role, mm. i.e. the president of the United States or the head of the EU. If he just goes, free money, or if he goes, like, you know, there's a, spring break you know like you can't do that shit you yeah. can only do what is prescribed that means the system will always preserve itself if you ever try to act against the interests of the system you yeah, will be removed from your position that's the whole point of i'm not saying this to say it's but yeah that it has to be that way that's the point of a government yes. i can't allow a person to usurp the government that's a coup yes it's inherently not going to happen system is self-preserving above all else so when you grant when you grant systems more power it exacerbates and continues this is why something like the pandemic was interesting Ow. because it inherently granted more power to the government that will unlikely be rescinded state power increased corporate opportunity <laughs> increased the wealth transfer took place. Any situation that's beneficial to the most powerful interests in the world Mm -hmm. is, you know, by definition, advantageous. And it's, I don't know, would that mean that they would prolong it? Would they see it as an opportunity? (sighs) Do the government and financial interests act uh, in accordance with the will of ordinary people? These are all questions for people to consider. And I suppose, really, it's not like we're... There's there's a philosopher called Mark Fisher. He's a British uh, uh, political philosopher. He then now killed himself, so I suppose his ideas didn't work on a personal level. But like, uh, (laughs) hey, it's tough at the top. But like, um, you know, David Foster Wallace, he was a pretty good writer, but in the end, I'm out. You know? <laughs> Even he couldn't read that whole thing. Yeah. <laughs> oh, fucking hell! Infinite, jet, infinite jet, too literal! <laughs> Like uh, Mark Fisher says that he coined the term late capitalism. It's like we cannot even envisage a culture beyond it. We can't even imagine what it would look like. That's its greatest triumph to rob us of the ability to sort of go, well, what if it was like European people and we just fucking eat long into the evening and we hang with our kids? And then immediately we do their argument for them. But how do you economically underwrite that? Hold on a minute. How did the most resource, how did the most rich, resource rich continents and nations in the world end up the poorest ones? How the fuck did that happen? How did that happen? It was the British. (laughs) We did it. (laughs) But like that shows you that imaginary faith based systems usurp practical ones. It don't matter yeah. all these fucking diamonds and gold and agricultural land. <laughs> yeah. All the rich people in some cold country in northern fucking Europe. Yeah. The one, interestingly, where their use of Christianity is the individualized Protestant work-based one rather than the Catholic uh, the communal based one. Exactly. Slushy says president can't just go free money. Didn't he just do that though? Don't they do that every fucking year? Where did all those stimulus checks come from during COVID? Like where did all those resources come from? Like where does any of our money come from? We just print money. So I think that's kind of cute. But also like I don't care.
Yeah. I'm going to take a break for a second because, no. listen, the coffee y'all drink is pussy. Oh, damn, now I want to listen. I mean this from the bottom of my heart. <laughs> Some of y'all drinking coffee right now. It's true. Here's what I find tough to reconcile about that. I can complain about that, but at the end of the day, I'm not giving up my toilet paper. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, my life it's is certain. Here's what I find tough to reconcile oh. about that. I can complain about that, but at the end of the day, I'm not giving up my toilet paper. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, my life There's is certain creature good. comforts you I benefit from the yeah. system. You benefit from the system. Everyone yeah. here, some less than others, benefits <laughs> from the system. Well, so how do you say, oh, this whole thing needs to burn down, when you know at the end of the day, you're probably not willing to give up the shit that you got from this pl pimp well, uh, this is This is interesting. I, I saw you talk about this as well, but I think this is an interesting point. I think you were talking to maybe Taibi about this, and he wrote this. But um, this idea that you could use fear to motivate people in elections in the past, and the fear meaning... You don't want your life to get worse, do you? Mm -hmm. If you vote for that guy, your mm -hmm. life's gonna get worse. Mm -hmm. And then for the working class, life got so bad that they're like, it can't get worse. Yeah. I'll vote for that Trump guy. Yeah. Because yeah, yeah. something's gotta change. Even Obama ran on like change. Hope. Hope. Which sorry, I know I saw your truths when Trump got elected. He said a lot of that stuff, which I very much agreed with, which is like, you can't he's his he said this. I'm stealing your stuff, but like Trump uh Good, the, gives me a little bit down Basically the news was like, <laughs> hey, if you elect Trump, things will get terrible. But for so yeah. many people, yeah. they were all, they were like, things are already terrible. So fuck yeah. you. I'm gonna vote for this guy to see if something changes. So that's exactly to your point, and that's something I really aligned with, with what yeah, you said. So earlier. it's like Abby, hey Abby, coming in with a super chat. Are there any, or, sorry, are there certain things that stand out to you in these types of conversations that help you recognize whether someone's saying similar things uh, are twos versus fives? Uh, saying, um, yeah, okay. So you know when the two, I said this earlier, great question. So like even the way they're talking about it, it's hard to know because like I do this too. I adapt when I'm in bubbles. So like I talk, you know, differently when I'm talking to Lauren Southern and I talk differently uh, just for the first few times they see me and then I usually kind of like, gravity towards more of my own language um but generally speaking this conversation still isn't about the self it's still about us versus them and i truly think that if i truly think that the us versus them narrative is the problem and i think it's just so lacking nuance it cannot possibly be us versus them because realistically all chaos comes from an us versus them I have problems with Max, Max has problems with me, and now chaos has ensued, and now our two communities, though some overlap, are like, ooh, who's gonna win the battle, right? There's like, we create the chaos. We are the participants in the world. We create the chaos, myself included. How can I not engage? The moment I engage with someone who does not share my reality, I am engaging in chaos, which is why I love chaos. You guys know this, I love freedom, I love chaos. I think everyone should have a platform and everyone should talk about things and everyone should have conversations. And I think the people who gravitate towards certain people should maybe stay away from people who don't gravitate that way. But when I'm listening to this conversation, I'm not really hearing a self-awareness or a radical acceptance. I'm not hearing responsibility. I'm not hearing that any of these people, except Akash, who just said it right now, right? Like he's not going to stop buying his toilet paper. I assume that's in reference to like holding yourself responsible by the small actions you make. It's like there's something in this conversation that just feels very much like we're still trying to figure out how to save the world. And I think if your narrative always begins with how do we save the world, you still are in your ego. And I can't fuck with that energy unless I'm in the bubble with them, if that makes sense. Is class consciousness a two bubble? <sighs> no, yeah, kind of, no. I mean, yeah, all these, mm, all, mm, uh, kind of. But like, it depends on the why and like why, how it's being observed, right? I think is more how I would contemplate that question. Again, it's the it's the why and like the, it's the why for me. I just wanna know why is Andrew, obviously Andrew's looking for an answer for something. Why is he looking for that answer? You know what I mean? Why is Mr. Girl getting flagged today? Is it because Nick Fuentes and his group? Well, why are they upset? And it's like, why is Destiny trying to become like someone he's different than, than the person he is today? He's looking for growth, something bigger than himself. The Catholics would say that yearning you have, or maybe even if the Muslims, I don't know, the Mormons, but like Catholics always say like that yearning you have for purpose is the missing of God. You're missing God. But we know religious people also have a sense of emptiness. Uh, they go through the same things Russell went through, right? Feeling like he's not good enough to feeling like he could be better. It's so for me when I'm listening, I'm like trying to find a better understanding. I'm trying to see the wisdom in the conversation, which is not really occurring but that's uh, that makes sense right and they're also trying to meet each other where they are they're all trying to i'm sure censor each other to extent like each one another to an extent they're also comedians so maybe they're having a comedian you know way of doing this conversation so i don't want to literally say it but i i'm waiting for russell to say something other than 
Like, I even hate the word elite now. When I hear the word elite, I automatically get like, buzzword, it's a buzzword, it's a buzzword. Because it doesn't mean anything. Like, it doesn't, what does it mean to be an elite? Like, I don't even, I don't know what that means unless we put that word against a bubble. Then I'm like, oh, I know what it means in this bubble. You know what I mean? Aaron says, save the world around you if possible. If not, then let it, let uh, the world be. Yeah, I think that's probably the most appropriate way to handle things, but that's just me. But maybe that's my laziness. You can't, I think that's the great failure of the, if we will, the mm. they, the elites or whatever. The great failure is they let the poor people get too poor. If they keep them at a level of comfort, yeah. Yeah, they you, won't. You learn to love your slavery. What's like, that? That's, that's my question with the freedom thing. It's yeah. like, how intrinsic to humanity do you think it is that we need freedom? Or do you think we can just learn and to love to our slavery and learn to be placated? Evidently, Mark, we are a highly adaptable species, and this is perhaps to our detriment because we. Jan says, "What isn't a bubble? Almost nothing. That's the point. Even I live in a bubble constructed of my own consciousness. Even I live in a physical bubble constructed of the community's consciousness." We will adapt to whatever conditions yeah. we have to survive in. People adapt to war, yeah. but famine for hundreds and thousands of years. Hundreds and thousands, maybe longer. I'm sure you're interested in the same kind of content I'm interested in. That look at different historical human narratives. We lived in tribal communities of 30 to 150 people, and in our closest primate neighbors, when they hit 150, they split. Mm. But we're not designed to right. live in concentrated, centrally led hierarchical cultures. I'm not like saying this. hierarchy full stop is wrong. I'm saying that broadly speaking, one of the things we could be looking to when engineering social models is how did we live for hundreds of thousands of years what things would we like to keep the toilet paper the phones yeah what things do we want to get rid of the ty tyranny the government interference the inequality the imbalance the propaganda the dumb entertainment the bullshit constant bullshit the big houses yeah. away from the cities where you can get away from everybody Quiet, do, you do do the do you think because i used to think this i used to think a small group of people control the masses but then that just means the masses are so fucking stupid that they're that controllable but I actually would argue that they're that fucking good that they actually do think the politicians are pretty good people. I would even argue that the reason people don't actually take down the elites is yes, they might be afraid of them, so they might be afraid to die because you probably assume this is your for only life on earth, but you also don't want to. Like they said, keep them comfortable enough that they don't complain. I think most people are comfortable enough. They're just in denial that they're comfortable enough. They want something different, like spoiled children. Give me something different. Or you could go get that something different on your own. But you won't because you'd rather they give it to you. Which means you do want them to be in power because you won't go get it yourself. I'm not, I'm not picking on you. That's my genuine struggle with this is I believe all of these things, but I also know I like nice watches. I want to take care of my wife and kids and other people. Sorry, what we're going to be comfortable first. That is interesting. Human beings are individualistic. Of course they are. Like look, Part of the reason I'm so devoted to these ideas is because I've not met that many people that are more individualistic than me, that are more like, do not fucking tell me what to do. I don't like, mm. you know, and like my starting position, anarchist calisthenics, break rules every day so that you just stay in the habit of breaking rules. I'm not fucking doing that. Why? 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 Why yeah. should I do that? That's how Sounds I operate. Like <laughs> <laughs> You're flirting with me now. I see you. <laughs> what, are we, are we in the third quarter? <laughs> Where are we? So, like, but like, of course, that's like, what I'm saying. What I, for me, what that uh, suggests, Akash, is that what we have to do, mate, is not have top down dictatorial systems. And, like, to your earlier point of why don't you run for some kind of office, is because those systems create people that occupy those systems. And what I believe we need are a new set of systems. And I also, yeah, I recognize that. I'm compromised. He wants a new set of systems. And I'm saying we should slowly over time, because that's what will happen change and impact the system by changing ourselves and then we'll see what we really want from society but i'm not just because russell wants it to change doesn't mean the majority does do you know what i mean I'm compromised by it. It's called, I am sybaritic. I like luxury. I like comfort. I grew up poor. I, I like shit. I mm -hmm. want stuff. Mm -hmm. you know, but I recognize that the reason that I want the watch or the attention is because there's some deeper deficit. And once, I, like, once in a while when I'm about to drop a load of cash on some stupid thing, I think some little voice in me says, do you think you would feel better if you were to do something worthwhile with this? Mm. And I'm just about ready to start testing myself on this altruism of like, would you feel better? <laughs> I say it to my wife system. sometimes and because like she's less mentally ill than I am, she's like, what if we just just let like loads of homeless people live in a house. Wouldn't we feel better than if we went on another luxury holiday? And she, you know, I wonder. Like we are told, like these things. This same is why you need a wife. These things. Thank, thank, thank <laughs> I'm not alone. I didn't do well out there, Andrew. Like you know, like the like the, the those same spiritual doctrines or templates that we reference when we were talking of how do you navigate nihilism versus purpose when you recognise that you are infinitesimally small in limitless vastness. You create the meaning. Well, by some other crazy wacky coincidence, also in those books they tell us that we should be of service, that we should devote mm. ourselves to service, that that's a way that we will find purpose and meaning. And also that uh, I think that's important. I do think you should, if you find it 
if you find yourself needing to, I think you're best served by eliciting, well, kind of like what Destiny said, is you do want a higher purpose, but it doesn't have to be something grand or like the gesture doesn't have to be something like world saving. Destiny feels like it could be because of his status as his job, but he could also be an over and amazing presence in his family's life. He could be a better son. He could be a better father, but he's not going to pick those ones. Those are hard. Those involve people. He's going to pick politics and the news, which is also hard, but it's easy for a destiny because work is easy for destiny. If destiny wants to challenge himself, he has to do what's actually hard. And what's hard is for him to mend and repair relationships he's had in his life and actually create healthy relationships out of them and not drama-filled streams where his wife is being yelled at by some random boy. You know what I'm saying? So I think there's something to be said about what serving others looks like. I think the easy route is assuming you can serve others by attacking the elites or reporting the news. I think that's the blinder. That's like blinders. You know what I'm saying? Instead of repairing the relationships you have in your own home, you'll go and try to help people outside of your bubble because you know it's hard as fuck to fix the problems you have in your own families. Do you know what I'm saying? So you're choosing the easy way out by choosing politics, by choosing money, by choosing the like the system instead of, because the system is just us. But like, don't tell me you're choosing a harder route by denying fixing the relationships you have in your direct life. You know what I mean? Our, look, we are flawed, that mm -hmm. we are flawed. And also I like to remind people in pursuit of real change that we're not trying to create perfection. Mm. We're just trying to make something better than this. Just better than this. That's all we're aiming at at first is to improve on this. <laughs> and if we think this is the ceiling, then things have got more desperate than I imagined. Because I think that it's possible for human beings to do better. I Dirty scumbag says, but those aren't lucrative, Brittany. Of course. Of course. I don't not. think it needs to be about believing in one centralized figure, although you need people that are good communicators and that can make this stuff funny and accessible and are comfortable being honest. You need that. It's, it's collective. It's truly a collective endeavor. How do you think your workspace should be run? How do you think your community should be run? What do you want to see? Like, trust people. It's the opposite. And once in a while, there will be crushing blows of disappointment mm. when people are bloody idiots, as they sometimes are, as I sometimes am. You know, like what I believe <laughs> is and what I was taught is we're all fucking crazy, but not on the same day. Mm. Not on the same day. Mm. So, like, to look like at that. different models. Mm -hmm. So, you can keep toilet paper. Okay. And watch it. Three ply. A um, minimum of free play, yeah, yeah. but we're going to be so abundant, we'll be wiping our asses on Rolexes. We'll be throwing <laughs> Cartiers away. <laughs> Have you been to Burning Man? I didn't go because of the drugs, you know, like even though they say there's a lot of people oh. they're not drinking or using, I, I don't the drugs and the hedonism. When I'm, I'm all right as long as I don't see too much of it, Alex. Right, if yeah. I see the hedonism, I get That's going to be nervous. hard for you there? Oh, yeah. But there are, there are kids there. They're like, you know, people go with their families. There's older people there that aren't really using. But there's a lot of people using that might be, like, triggering. But a lot of what you talk about, is, yeah. it gave, I don't know, when we went, I went a few times, it, it gives you a lot of faith in humanity. If everybody's on drugs for a week, people are really good to one another. <laughs> and, and that is, like, the cynical look at it. But when you leave, you're, like, filled up a little bit. It's, like, the closest that I felt to kind of, like, being awake. And then it goes away, and you get caught yeah. back up in the rat race and the things that you want to achieve, yeah. et cetera. But if there is a way for you to, like, pop in and see what humans can not only not only like achieve in terms of like interpersonal relationships, but like also build. Like yeah. these people just decide to go to the desert with very little communication with one another. Oh, uh, this is okay. So this is now Aunt, I've been watching Schultz for a while now and Schultz be using the word bubbles. My man watched my work. Not really because everyone knows the word bubbles, but he's been talking about bubbles a lot. And this, this might be a, uh, well, it depends. This is either a two realizing, oh, people live differently than me. Or, yeah, maybe it's like a two realizing, because he's talking about Burning Man. Okay, I've dated a burning, uh, a, a burner. I've, like, not gone to Burning Man. I refuse to also be trapped in a hedonistic desert party. That sounds like my nightmare. But um, it's like Andrew's like, this is really cool. So there's a part in life where you hit as, a, like, a bubble popping two where you're like, whoa, people go to Burning Man. That's kind of dope. People have BDSM. Whoa, people are gay. And you're like, whoa. And I don't, I think Andrew's going through that journey right now. I think Andrew's just discovering, like, people are living totally different lives than you think, and they're making it work for them, which I think is so important. Like, Burning Man has been working because it works for people, right? Maybe not all people, but some. So is Andrew having a moment where he's realizing, like, yo, people are different? Well, probably probably a part of that but I think it's even bigger because Andrew's whole shtick as a comedian is knowing different bubbles ethnically so maybe he's now having a questioning of like maybe he is having a three moment I don't know Andrew is much more open I think than Russell is funny enough I think Russell at this point in the conversation is more closed-minded than Andrew Schultz is but maybe knows more than Andrew because he reads more hmm it's definitely bubble hopping 
but is it level hopping? And build a city where there's no money. <clears throat> So yeah. You can't buy anything, well, but iced coffee. It functions. <gasps> Dude, this is the craziest thing about it. You were talking about earlier about like people being coffee. left up to their own devices. In the weirdest way, it's like shockingly conservative, but nobody there would admit it, right? Like it, it's or libertarian if you want to call it, because it's basically like there's no fucking police really running around. There's no security. There's no rules. There's absolutely nothing. Mm. And people are building these structures. Nobody dies. One guy ran into a fire. That was on him. He was planning on doing it, right? He took the name too, literally. Literally. <laughs> Burning man. But, like, the idea that you could go to this place and, like, people are doing all these drugs, et cetera, but they say that you are relying only on yourself. And when you rely only on yourself, you go, oh, shit, there's no safety net? I better not take too much of that because I could pass out in the desert and die. Mm. Oh, shit, I better take some food because I'm gonna, everybody has a backpack full of water. When you are self-reliant, you take more care of yourself. When the government or somebody is out there looking after you, you push it a little bit. I feel like the system only works, though, because there's abundance. And there's also a week. Well, wait, wait, go, uh, start with the abundance well, it's, thing. It's a function of time also, but like once there's genuine scarcity, like all of a sudden all the, the hugs and kisses go away. One, no, 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 100%, 100%. What, what it looks at, for me, I'm looking at it as not a way that we can live life. You cannot live life like this, but it is what humans are capable of. Mm -hmm. So that to me really just opened me up. I was like, oh my God, like in the right circumstance mm. with abundance, humans mm. are willing to share and help. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, and it probably create. existed like that in communities. Uh, Kate says, do you think it's possible for a wholly peaceful society to exist while there are some humans uh, with a work drive and some humans without a work drive? A dis uh, discrepancy of work will always ex exist. Sometimes I have to think about what words look like in my head. Oh, my God. Um, um, I, I think we are evolved animals over time and evolved species. And I think there is an evolutionary component built into our literal genetics that encourages us and keeps us working. I also think all people work differently and for and in better and some worse ways. So I don't believe in a completely, I don't believe in utopia, right? It's a fantasy world. I don't believe in like united peaceful movements. I can't make peace in my own goddamn family. I don't know how we would ever believe like humans could gather together and make it unless the society, if you put me and Q in a room long enough, I'm gonna yell at him. And Q's like my best friend. If you put me in a room with my sister long enough, I'm going to yell at her. And she's my sister. I've never seen humans coexist together and make peace 24-7. Like, why? How Do you know what a period is? Girl, I'm on it now. I will fight the world on my period, girl. So I'm saying, like, it's like a denial of our own evolution. I'm saying work in conjunction with the balance of you're an evolved animal and your consciousness that can evolve past your body. Like I said, my body holds a lot of the trauma, but my consciousness is chilling. But that you still, I still have to let my body live out the trauma. I have to let my body move through the motions because it's just, it's doing its own thing separate from my consciousness because I can separate the two. Some people think they're the same. People are like, my body is my brain. My brain is my body. Cool. Love that for you. The brain might not even be the consciousness. Like I, I just know my brain is making it so I'm able to like converse and understand. Right. But like, it's not, I don't like, it's fine. It's fine. The way the conversation is happening. It's fine. But like, like, they're trying to be somebody. They're trying to be helpful, but they're also fucking performative as fuck in this conversation, which is fine. But then, but keep in mind, keep in mind, like I, I'm from New York, where with abundance, people hoard still. Right. Yeah. So I'm like, every second I walk out of my house, someone's trying to find a way to get money out of me. Hey, you want to support the environment? Hey, you want to do this? Mm -hmm. And then I go to this place where with abundance, they're like, Hey, can I feed you? Mm -hmm. Hey, do you want? Go to a Middle Eastern home. They will feed you. They will put clothes on your back if you come with like, and you need anything, they will give it to you. It's also cultural. He's describing Burning Man like it's the most amazing place. Burning Man is, okay, it's just full of people, so I'm going to say relax. But obviously, like, this is just like a cultural bubble, but it doesn't really work at Burning Man the way he thinks it does. There's also sexual assault stories at Burning Man. There's also, like, rapes that happen at Burning Man. People get in trouble at Burning Man. Like, there are stories that people tell me when they come back where they're like, things went wrong, blah, blah, blah. There's, like, an orgy dome at Burning Man. I'm saying, I'm saying, I'm saying nothing is perfect. And that's okay. There, it doesn't have to be. Just like let people do. Let them go to Burning Man. Let them go to Folsom. Let them do their weird things. I just, yeah, it's, I love this for Andrew though, that he's like discovering that like, hey, Burning Man could work in other places maybe. 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 Want to take a nap? Hey, do you want a massage? And they're not asking for any <laughs> money from me. And it was this fucking huge shock to my system to see that humans even wanted to do this for one another. Literally, you've never been to a Middle Eastern's home. Will it go away in a week? Absolutely. Is there like a very tuned down version of that that maybe we could get to? That would be awesome. 
Yeah. yeah. And it shows that a value system other than an economic one, or at least a financially motivated economic one, is applicable. And also that we can be bold in the types of visions we have. I suppose when we're utopian in our thinking, in our conversation, the practical part of us thinks, oh, that can't happen. Like you say, it's only for a week. Anyone can pull it off for a week. Anyone can pull yeah. it off for an hour. Right. Maybe I won't even get home from London without breaking some of the <laughs> principles that I've like espoused about enthusiastically yeah. in a chair for an hour. You know, maybe I will shout in traffic or be impatient with someone. Certainly there will be examples of selfishness. But at least we have an idea. And what I return to is the idea of having a set of spiritual principles and values yep. that are broad enough for people to approach them in their own way. And the, yep. the spirituality is a kind of a personal declaration, not you should be doing that or you shouldn't be doing that. Yep. It's just like, this is how you might live. This is how philosophers yep. used to take it it's, in the classical world. It's almost like you don't know something's possible until you see it. And then once you see it, now you believe it can be attained. You know what I'm saying? So like yes. if, if, if maybe before that I didn't know it was possible for somebody to just give me something and not want anything back and to find joy in giving me something. Mm. I literally didn't know that that was a real thing. Yeah, that's that's, that's and, and, and I'll be honest, I was, I was quite drawn to um, uh, priests because of this. Because every time I spoke to a priest, even in adulthood, they were just like curious and thoughtful and like asked questions and like, but it didn't feel like they oh, were trying getting, to get anything oh, from no, me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I, I was too old. You ran into the wrong priest. <laughs> like, Here's I another question. Would I you like to sit like... on my lap? Yeah. <laughs> Here's another question. Although shorts a little tight. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't feel like true altruism existed before going to Burning Man. And yeah. to y'all's point, and maybe we're cynical because we haven't been. Yes. So, and, but I guess what the nice thing about seeing it. And I... <laughs> what? <laughs> Burning Man isn't altruistic. It's it's a fantasy. For the week, it's not altruistic. You make trades, or okay. So, what it even is altruism? Christian asks. Altruism is this held belief that you can do good without needing anything in return. From the goodness of your heart, pure action, do good, help somebody, give of yourself without needing anything in return. Obviously, I think the placebo or the the thumbs up, the social credit is enough. Like they've done studies that we also get social credit social credit from just attempting or saying things out loud that we've done that are good. I helped, I'm gonna go work at a soup kitchen this Saturday. Social credit, even if I've never even gone, I'm getting the social credit of being a person who's thinking about working at a soup kitchen or whatever, right? It's like Burning Man is blowing their minds and I love that. So we don't need to judge this experience. This is a beautiful experience. I love that he experienced Alex and like uh, Andrew are experiencing like a relationship with altruism in a way they hadn't before. I really appreciate this energy, but this is amazing. So this is what they're saying. And I'm looking at them like, oh, wait, didn't you see the other 6,000 bubbles that also do this in a much better way? Because for Brittany, Burning Man, I never went for a reason. I can't, I've been around burners. I've tried to help them with their like floats and like their like what they want to do. Like I've hung out, like I said, I dated a guy who went to Burning Man every year. So like I hung out with his friends. They are the most selfish fucked up people I've ever met in my life. And that's just a small group of people who go to Burning Man. What if the people they met when they were there were only those people? Or what if at Burning Man, it's the only time they're actually good people because the rest of their day outside of that, they are not good people. Like even the guy I was dating was like not a evil person, but he was not a great neighbor. Like he constantly picked fights with people. He'd yell at people while they were driving. He'd claim that he had like the moral high ground and he was like Burning Man taught me all of this. And I'm like, okay. So like what they're getting out of Burning Man versus like what I experienced just meeting people who went to Burning Man, ugh different but that's what i'm saying when i went into my first poly communities bdsm communities i had the same thought like oh my god people don't like are they're not jealous or, or cheating and they're like consent based and they don't spread stis and all of this like really like oh, this is great none of that is technically perfectly happening some people yes care about you not spreading stis some people yes and poly groups don't cheat yes 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 but then there's other people because other people are there there is no community in which you are just safe there is no community in which you are completely without threat there is no community or part of the world whether you're alone in a forest dealing with the nature community or in a mall dealing with other humans you're still dealing with nature because we are a part of nature so i don't i think this is so sweet but this is exactly bubble talk going back to abby's super chat this is bubble this is twos there's no way a five would say out loud burning man really made me realize altruism was a thing i'm like huh what is this? I killed myself on stream because of you. I've spoken about this before, but even seeing it myself, and, and, and unfortunately, I got this feeling through a drug, but maybe you experienced it through drugs as well. It's like, instead of the drug making me just feel good and everything was just about me, 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 I did Molly and I found- Sorry, people who go to Bringing Man are good. 
So Andrea says, what if the other people that go to Burning Man? No, these were good people too. These selfish fucking cunts were also good people. I think most people are good, even the selfish fucking cunts. Like, I think, like, my ex wasn't a bad person, but he wasn't a great community member. And he never, he had a hard time, like, all, I, I'm another, I date others, and my others also tend to have a hard time dealing with communities. So I think he found his place in Burning Man, and I'm glad he did. But it's, like, people I didn't want to be with. You know, I just did not like that group of humans. But again, it's like, I'm not saying those group of humans are bad. I'm saying that I don't fuck with them, which is why we have chaos in the world. Because people will think, well, if you're a good person and I'm a good person, we should get along. No, that is not how things work. But that's how people think they work. So they're saying, like, they're going to think if I'm criticizing people at Burning Man, then I think people at Burning Man suck. I think they're good people. I just don't fucking want to fuck with that version of good people found out what it was like to feel like full and have extra joy. And with the extra joy, I was calling my parents and saying how great they were. I'm calling my friends. I'm just sharing the love. And I was like, oh, is this what humans do with abundance? Is this what humans actually do when we have more? And if we're constantly put in this position where we have to strive to get more, where we're, we don't have a nice enough watch, we don't have a nice enough car, we don't have a nice enough house. And once we do get that house, there's somebody with an even nicer one. If there is, I don't know what the system is. And I don't know even if, even know if it's a psychological <laughs> change, but if we're put in the position where we have enough, and that enough is set much lower mm. with this extra we will share well to maybe this is russell's point in the end to the in the end maybe the abundance is emotional it's not physical you need what you need yeah. but if you feel emotionally abundant then you give if you don't feel emotionally abundant no matter how financially abundant you are you're, you're just filling you're void. filling the void yeah, 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 but if you yeah. feel emotionally abundant and you have enough to survive then you give i have enough to survive i feel emotionally abundant why don't i give and that is the idea of like a, a priest or like a mother Teresa. or whoever. that's why catholicism or christianity works like unconditional love from the father you like get yeah. filled from god yeah. Like, yeah now what do we do in and that's why people say it's a control not a basic, all religion is to control the poor people because it fills them up and i can still keep being abundant oh shit i can keep all this money when they're filled up in a cynical, cynical view. That's it. So then what happens when you replace religion in America with money, knowing that there's always going to be somebody richer, there's always going to be somebody with more things, and having the most things is what makes you feel the most fulfilled. You're going to have that scarcity. You're going to have people mm -hmm. robbing each other. Like, you're going to have people committing violence. One of my uh, callers and I were talking about uh, why I feel so comfortable with where I'm at. And we are talking about, like, what mm -hmm. basics need to be met in our lives for us to feel like we're doing enough. And we talked about, like, how much money do you think we should have in our bank account to be to feel like we're doing okay with money. And mine was like, uh, cover all my bills, do my essentials. And hers was like, cover all my bills plus like 20K a month. And I was just like, and it's like, you listen to people's different goals. Everyone has a different goal for what it will be like to have a peaceful or good or abundant life. And I think that's what we're all debating is like, well, what does that look like? Does it look like being a homeless guy in a forest? Cause isn't that the ultimate, like, if we really believe like having things uh, or not having things makes you the best kind of person, then we'd all be like shoeless nomads. But we don't actually believe that. We're not Diogenes. Like a lot of us do think that good people have mansions. Good people have planes. Good people have air conditioning. So I actually, like, when having this conversation, it's like I think we're all seeking what is the right path. Again, who tell us what to do. Again, tell me what to do. What is the right path? The right path is to just exist. Take a deep breath acts to attain some of those resources yeah it's a weird thing like we completely shun religion in america and we feel like we're like these philosophers by saying like oh well, religion doesn't make sense or whatever whether it makes sense or not which is what you were saying earlier if it provides emotional stability to people where they actually treat one another better isn't that a better system if you meet and spend real time with a truly religious person you will never knock religion again you just won't because you'll be like oh this is the good it can have good god bless you mm. for being religious good for you that's what got you there. But Good just like you. any system, they will fucking abuse it. Just like with capitalism, we'll get abused. Just like with communism, it gets abused. We're abusers. That's what humans do. So it's like, oh, how do any, you... It's like the internet. Any tool that's powerful can be misused. Mm. God is the most powerful idea on earth. Mm. Of course it can be misused. But that doesn't mean you get rid of it altogether. You still see the good in it. You in particular with the internet see the good in it. Whenever whenever I think about like, ah, this whole thing is shit, get rid of it. I'll think about great points you've made about the internet. Not only our livelihood, but like yeah. other things that it's brought. And I'm like, ah, I guess it's not all bad just how you use it. Yeah. I think religion is the same thing. It's incredibly powerful, so it can be misused in the worst way. Mm. But used at what it's supposed to be, it's a beautiful thing. See that what you're saying, it seems, is that religion is something that can only be applied to spiritual ideas but in fact religion is a, a sort of a set of principles that can be applied anywhere and uh, to your point about money there andrew is that if you when nietzsche says god is dead people forget that what he means is god is dead and there's not enough water in the world to cleanse our hands of the blood that we've spilled that man is religious so if you take away the idea that god is a set of values that are about altruism kindness mutual support a set of principles that make it easier to deal with the fact that we're alive and we're going to die and everyone we love is going to die so here are some ideas that have consistently be found to be useful and i really love your point that when you're around a religious person 
person, you feel its value. Mm -hmm. You feel its value beyond rationalism and materialism. The Enlightenment gave us a set of principles, many of which were incredible. It gave us the what I believe to be the false markers of progress around science and medicine, technology and medicine. Because we have progressed so evidently, unignorably and indefatigably in these areas, we are unable to see that in some areas we have stayed the same or even possibly regressed. Mm. If you extract these principles from our life, love, kindness, care, you create a kind of nihilistic abyss is what emerges. And like you see that when you talk about your experience at Burning Man and how it gave you a vision for how things might be, it brings, I believe, an important point to the forefront. We're told that our cultures and societies are neutral. They're not neutral. It's not just like this is what it is. That's that's an, a set of values that have been arrived at because they are beneficial <laughs> to a certain set. Remember when we touched on the pandemic a moment ago? Sometimes we think the system is broken. Well, when you think the system is broken, look at who it's working yeah, it's for working, really it might be well. Working perfectly. And if you find that it's working really well for the most powerful interests in the world, do yeah. you think that that is a coincidence? Yeah. Or do you think that the system is perhaps a reflection of their intention? Yeah. And when you see an alternative vision, like uh, the famous example in our culture, you know, there's nylon, you know, simultaneously they invented that tech across the Atlantic. That's why it's called New York, London, nylon. Oh, no. That tech was simultaneously as if there is some ethereal connection, some unitary force that underwrites all apparent separateness. Yeah, yeah. That consciousness precedes material. That consciousness does not emerge from evolutionary processes. Of evolutionary processes emerge from consciousness. These are the ideas of Bernardo Castro. He's another good guest you could have on your podcast. The other example, and it's dumb in a way, no one could break the four-minute mile, then one geezer broke the four-minute mile, then another one yeah, does yeah, the next yeah, day. Yeah. Oh, yeah, you can do this. I think calculus was the same way, right? Was it really? Yeah, I, I, Newton I didn't know that example. Newton like both, they came up with it at the same time simultaneously and different countries never talked to each other. If consciousness is non-local, <laughs> if consciousness is something we arrive at at a certain point in our evolution, but the idea of a frequency that we can all be strung along like flags upon a string, then, then it's something that we're all simultaneously accessing. And this point of modeling, of like creating communities that function well mm. to demonstrate to it, the problem is, is whenever anyone starts a cult, it always goes the same way. You find out that the leader's got a bunch of watches and he's fucking everyone. And you're, oh, no, that's why it's so disappointing when yeah. people that use those values, to then you think, oh, fuck, yeah. they care about the same things. Mm. They care about the values of sex and materialism. They don't really care. I suppose that's why the idea of asceticism emerges. If you can live without sex, if you can live without drugs, if you can live without material pleasure, then perhaps you're right. Not suggesting that everybody has to do that, yeah. but to demonstrate the value of those principles and ideas. So I think that's a, it was a very lovely conversation between the two of you about like the, the, you know, all these things are about utility. How do you use it? Democracy could work well. America can work well. Yeah. Internet can work well. God can work well. It can work well. And if we had to like restructure society, if you had to like sit down with a bunch of people and go like, what is the yeah. best system to get the best out of people, the best treatment of people, even if you want to just extra uh, extract all their resources, but like what was the best way to control these people? Making them value God, being like the coolest person in the city is the guy who shares the most, mm. cares the most, like wants to help the most. That makes you the coolest guy. Oh, he's the most yeah. helpful. Value he's, the immaterial and I'll value the material. And I, yeah. it's like, it's a, it's a brilliant system. I don't know why they went away from it. Why is there this push away from religion? If you were a rich guy that is just greedy and wants to take all the money from it, why would you shun God? Because, if anything, double down on it. Yeah, the people who misuse it, I think, turn those people off. But yeah, I, I was even thinking Christianity, the idea of Jesus eating with like the, the sinners and you know the, the line better than I do, but like the compassion that teaches, if God is eating with these people and breaking bread with these people that are supposed to be untouchable, and that's like, oh, how can I, why would I be above that? Why would I be above mm -hmm. being compassionate toward these people? The issue with religion though, like governmentally, is that it's ascribing power to something beyond the government. So you have to somehow hijack that or have something like church and state like unity or manipulate it because you can't change what God says. It's like in China, it's like yeah. the word, like the religion is the state. Yeah. Okay. Okay. What about this? We've seen. Um, is everyone having a Christian arc this week? Uh, What's going forget on? what I was watching. when You were talking to, and we were talking to uh, about like channeling. I don't know if it's God. I don't know if it's a higher power. But like, I remember certain moments in my life where I've seen something, and I felt like that person was attached to oh, a higher power really, for that moment like, in time. I, I mean, I remember my brother who's had, you know, a trouble with mental illness, schizophrenia, that kind of stuff. I remember he was playing drums in a jam band at the Blue Note and he went on a riff. And I thought that, I thought he was God for a second, man. Like, it was like, I've never experienced anything like it. And the entire room is like watching this happen. And he is operating with this band, but clearly to everybody else in the band who's played with him all the time, saw it happen and they were like, what the, f it was his solo. And they were like, what is happening right now? And he was so lost in it. I think he had his eyes closed. I, I don't even know if he knew what was going on. And I think you see this happen. Sometimes you see it happen in sports. Sometimes you see it happen in music. Sometimes you see it happen in comedy. I'm sure we can all think of like moments where maybe we even felt like something is happening. I'm not in control of all this. There's something else going on. And what do you think that is? I think that there is a unitary force under things. And I think when you get out of the way, it comes through you. And I think when we're describing genius in athletics or arts, what we're describing is that process exactly of channeling, but the person just gets out of the way. Because when you see it in sport, you think, how does that person do that? That's impossible. That's what genius is. It's the defiance of a rational undergirding. You know, we like to think, oh, well, if you train and if you do this and if you do this, and then you will arrive at this point of excellence. But sometimes people are just amazing. And sometimes it kills people to hold on to that because there are so many examples in particular, you know, like why do you think all them people are killing themselves and becoming drug addicts? It's a very bright thing to hold on to that. It's a very mm. hard thing to hold on to that, particularly if you live 
live within a model that denies its existence. Yeah. What would God really be? All the ways that we discuss God are symbolic ways of discussing God due to the nature that it's by its necessary beyond language. But what would it... It's a bit like a father. It's a bit like sort of a, a light. It's a bit like the force <laughs> yeah. of consciousness. It's not like any of these things, actually, but yeah. we know it when we see it and we know it when we feel it and we know when you feel that something is more important than you, when it comes to you through love. And what is love really? I believe love is the bodily acknowledgement of oneness. You love a sports team, you love a pair of shoes. You okay, at the same time, my Discord and my YouTube chat, both of you wrote, that's just flow. Literally, that's just flow. And you wrote just flow states. That's so funny. Yeah, so like, this is just like, they're describing flow to me, which Verveki talks about. We watch a lot of Verveki on my Discord. So if you guys want to watch The Meeting Crisis, like we do a weekly discussion group on it mostly. Um, I'm not there for most of them. I really want to be, but I'm doing calls usually. Um, this is just flow, but they're describing like God through flow, which is interesting, right? Right? Also, Lav is going to be here at exactly 1.30 PST, so we have to finish this video. Love your wife or your child or whoever it is, and you feel in that moment, like that Molly moment that you described, yeah. you thought, I've got so much, I just want to love them. Yeah, yeah. I just want to love them. I'm connected to them. Yeah. I'm not separate. You know, But our culture doubles down all the time on the worst values, the greed, the selfishness, the separateness, the competition. All of those things can be useful assets, and we've all had to, in various ways, learn how to use that stuff in mm. order to not be crushed, you know, because if you don't know how to do that, you will be you crushed. Be so, so like, but like, what is God really? Unity, a, a loving oneness, does it have a charge? Is there an energy to it what is this phenomena really well it seems from some of the conversations that i have recently that the material model no longer holds up you cannot describe and define how the universe emerges and functions using solely a material method because of some of the obvious examples in quantum physics because when someone takes psychedelics you would think that there would be more neurological activity not loads less of neurological activity does that happen yeah when you under yeah under neurological scan if you give someone a powerful psychedelic and they go oh my god i was in this world and i met this orb of light and these faber j eggs of pure consciousness were talking to me and i met Mohammed, peace be upon him like under a scan what's happening is nothing <laughs> like so what is it's almost like what's happening is the removal of the systems of restriction and there is god that is that makes sense that makes sense when you're saying get the person out of the way yes oh shit so, so when you're just like go, i guess go, i'm go. curious like with channeling how can you trust that you are channeling some type of like positive cosmic deity that's there for good and not some type of like and i don't want to like ascribe like demonic because that puts it in like a judeo-christian sense but like some type of negative cosmic energy like you know like you mentioned just in like the, the beautiful example of your brother yeah. in the flow state doing that drumming but flow also, state, that's what some people call yeah. it as well yeah, yeah what you've also mentioned is flow that your brother state. has problems with mental illness and isn't it curious that it's the you know dictators and the mentally ill the people that claim that god is talking directly to them you know and like what i feel like is that we all of us when it says do not worship engraven images. The engraven image that we worship is the image of the self. I have created this little inner deity called Russell through trauma and memory and biochemistry. And this has become the most, this is my God. What Russell wants is my God. When this is suspended, either through the use of narcotics or breath work or meditative practice, there is nothing. There is a, like a vibrant nothing that mm. could be anything or a super state of potentialities, which is how the quantum field is sometimes descri described, a super state of possibilities. The horrifying truth, if you ask me, mate, is that it is neither good nor bad until we make it so. When we talk about the Tao, when we talk about the agency of the individual, when we talk about the great British painter and poet, William Blake, oh, who saw oh. angels in the trees and tried to illustrate them both through his brush and through his pen. He says, like when he done these engravings of the Book of Job, Yahweh, who, who is God, of course, and Job are depicted as the same being, like God and Job look the same. This is a Jungian analysis by a person called Edinger. And he says that God and the, the ego are being depicted here. Job is the ego, Yahweh is the higher self, the highest attainable self that is already in present within you. Because the, where would the enlightened man be except within you? It's not anywhere else, it's within you and accessible. Yahweh shows Job, here is the behemoth that I have made as I may be. The behemoth is a dumb carnality. It's all mouth and sinew. I know the behemoth well. I know what appetite is. Here is the Leviathan that I made as I may be, this deep, deep, this serpent of the deep. It, it is suggested in this text and in these illustrations by William Blake that we must become good in order to make God good. God is beyond good and evil in Nietzsche's phrase. God can be all things and indeed is good things. That's why the rather moot arguments of, oh, why would God make this creature that does this or allow cancer and all of that? Because they'd be in the limitless oneness where all things are connected. There is no register. If there is no space and time, hmm. how can there be any context at all? Because everything is absolutely unified. For a moment, when you get the ego out of the way, you channel it. It's present. It's in present. We've all got access to it. That's one of the messages of Christianity. It's one of the messages of Islam. It's one of the messages of Buddhism. Don't give it to some other person and tell them, excuse me, will you look after me? It's there always. So it could be either. It could be a demonic or daemonic or evil jinn force. It could be any of those things. That's why these myths consistently address these possibilities. That's why I believe that any political systems that we devise have to honor spirituality. But the robustness and the trans-denominational nature 
nature of spirituality that if you, we might all have different ways of getting there and like someone like you is not going to want someone like me telling you what to do and I think most people feel that I don't want no one telling me what to do I don't like it if I choose to follow some system whether it's political or religious then I will but I don't want centralised forces dominating that landscape whether they're financial governmental, cultural or corporate bring this shit down that's what America was meant to be anyway yep. it was meant to be federalised everyone was meant to, all these nations that established it were meant to run their own states mm -hmm. allow people to run their own communities this is what I feel must be the principle and the reason we do it is because no one has no more value than anybody else mm -hmm. well first of all I love that these ideas resonate I mean, I fuck with that as like, ooh, Trey says Russell might be a five with no foundation. That's really interesting. I mean, I fuck with all these ideas. I don't like the ending statement though, but maybe he's just saying that, that that's what he'd prefer. Like, I think I'd prefer that too. Like small communities governing each other, but that's just like not how like global economies work. It's very difficult. I don't know anything about global trade. Like, I don't know how to keep our countries from nuking each other. So I think it's like a really nice idea, but the world is really big and there's a lot of humans to kind of put places, right? And then we're all born into communities we didn't even consent to be born and born into. And so it's kind of difficult to balance all of this. But I think that's a, that, that might be the most interesting thing he said so far is channeling, like channeling the God within you. But the dilemma I have to the conversation is that it is like, it's a little, um, I don't love the language he uses, but I can, hold on, I can bubble hop and translate it well enough. I, I still am hearing undertones of, I have a direction for humanity to go into, and I think it's the only one that matters. Versus, I think, accepting that humanity is in the direction it should be in, because we're doing exactly what we should be doing, because we're allowing people space to do it. I'm happy for Sneeko's journey because Sneeko needs to go on this journey to be whoever he's going to be in six years. And I'm excited to meet that person. But right now, he has to be this person to be that person. So that's why it's easy for me to accept Sneeko in his moment because I'm like, look at you doing your thing. And everyone's like, but you need to criticize him. Why? I know this path is going to bring him to a much better version of himself um, if he chooses it to. Uh, you guys just don't think he will. So because you don't have faith in the goodness of people... You assume people will choose the bad path. I think people choose exactly the paths they need to choose, which is the good path. Unless it's truly an evil act. Then at that point, you can have a conversation. But even, like, the road to hell is paved in good intentions, so... Ending with you because it is the foundation of Hinduism. Like everything, it's everything that Hinduism. I've is told you really I'm a jot, bro. Yeah, so <laughs> the jet, the jets are sick. But the, the, that's close enough. That's uh, pure Hinduism. Yeah. Okay. Fair <laughs> enough. Fair enough. Um, I actually really admire that you study Hinduism. I think it's beautiful when other people study other religions. And I love that you are very conscious of your ego and you are always watching it. Now my question to you is how do you reconcile that with the first 30 seconds of all of your YouTube videos now? Hello there, you 5.8 million awakening. Because <laughs> you've got to generate a little bit of heat. You've got to, you've got to get people going. You've got, got to get, get rid of toilet cooking. paper, bro. You keep a little bit of toilet paper. Like, I was riled up listening to that. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, this is the truth? That seems... <laughs> have us meditate, yo. Let's do some truth. We've got to do all of it. We've got to do all of it. We have to awaken them. It's all of our responsibility. And we're all, even over the course of this conversation, we've seen how there are different contributions that we're all making. I don't think I'm any better at being you than you are. There's no way. You are the best person. You're a miracle at it. You're marvelous at it. You're doing right. such an incredible job. And like, I, I want to be left alone to kind of be me and look for opportunities to collaborate and cooperate yeah. and I feel like I think I think no, we're no, finding them right now aren't here's, we mm. here's my thing is you really are so brilliant and so influential and then to say truth is a politic as opposed to truth is the God within is the Othman is what Greg achieved which is we are all God yes. inside yeah. and Greg achieved that for a minute it was beautiful that's truth yes I so you. and I, I just think humans are so in their egos why do you have to be gods Unless you're going through that journey. I think you do, actually. I think you have to run the narrative that, like, you're the god in your reality. And then you have to run through the narrative that, like, but no one's a god. Because we're all gods. We're all just people. I think I choose a much more, like, humility perspective, which is, like, we are not gods. We are people. And people are flawed and beautiful and good. But we are people. I don't like this idea of, like, we're god. And, like, yes, Okay, that works too. If you want to be like, you're God, bro. You're the anime character. Make a decision. You're Goku. What do you want to do with your life? Do it, bro. Sure. But realistically, we are all humans doing our best. Trying our hardest. To whatever extent that means. With the tools and the narratives we have rolling in our head at the moment. Not everyone's doing that. Sometimes when people call me, they're like, I'm doing my best. I was like, no, you are not. And they're like, really? I was like, yeah, because your best has, is more than this based off of what you just told me, right? But you don't have to, you can say you're doing your best in the second, but 
I think when you choose to do, like, you have to first believe it. So maybe they have to first believe their God in order to know that they're not doing their best in order to do their best, which is their best because they didn't know they weren't doing their best. I think you're so influential and so smart and know. have such a grasp of it that when you call the things you're about to say about the vaccine or whatever, I'll avow it. I agree with a lot of it. It's just not truth. Truth is this thing that you understand very well. Yes, truth is a very, very complex idea. But if you think about that, those kind of that kind of content doesn't exist in a vacuum. I'm like trying to address a very particular problem mm -hmm. that there are certain narratives that are being offered, and I believe it's part of my role to create mm, populist connections between diverse communities, including, in my opinion, blue collar communities. In so he's doing what Destiny is doing with the news, like I'm going to be a bridge and I'm going to bridge the differences between people, and Russell's doing it with spirituality. In my country and in and I'm. In your country mm -hmm. so that people start to recognize hold on a minute there are other ways of approaching this and i'm always careful to say you do whatever you think yeah. is right i, I don't that. think i know more than you your child is different than mine you've got different grandparents than me you've got different ancestors i don't like because i'm this is where we're lucky as stand-ups we get to look in their eyes we get mm -hmm. to look in their eyes and i tell them i don't think i'm cleverer than you i know you're sick of being spoken to like you're an idiot i know that you're over it and i see that this is how we conduct our discourse we're comedians we're not better than them we are them we're a certain part of their spirit the, i i don't say nothing on that channel i don't believe in and even collaboratively the people on my team who i'm why is enough not to put on camera, Andrew. A little note for you there. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, um, like, you know, they don't agree with me. Yeah. So, like, I'm continually having to go, well, well this is why I think. They go, no, this study says this. I, this study I actually says agree that. with a lot of what you say. And it's a small thing, but it, it gets, as a Hindu, it means a lot to me that truth is not, especially because you know, truth is not something to be told. It's something to be sought from within. That's beautiful. I will honor that piece of advice, and I will honor that note. I'll take well, that on board. You. Well, thank you. This you help me to grow. Hey, it's a beautiful thing. <laughs> Listen, Russell Brand, thank you so much Thanks for having me on your amazing show. You're, You're so brilliant. Man. I thank appreciate you. you for taking the time, man. I love this it. is awesome. So thank glad you. I came here. Thank you for coming to our country. You're thank beautiful. you for having us. Brilliant. Thank, thank you. Thank you for coming. Thank you very much. Okay, everybody watching at home, now that we're in this beautiful studio right here, not the one we did. Thank you.